Hi, welcome to Boss Professional Live UK. I'm Danny. And I'm Chris. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. You might not believe this, but it's not always necessary to have the biggest, most powerful tool on the site. Sometimes just a little precision and finesse goes a long way. That's where the Bosch Professional 12 volt range comes in, all powered by this, the Bosch Professional 12 volt battery. Thanks Chris. It's not only precision and finesse that the 12 volt battery range excels at, due to smaller size and in some cases innovative design features make these tools useful for applications outside the capabilities of larger machines. From combi drills to angle grinders, impact drivers to our measuring tools. Smaller tools also mean lighter tools, so when you're working overhead for prolonged periods of time, you'll find them far less tiring. On top of that, you can get far more tools in a single bag. With nearly 50 machines in the range, whether you're a joiner, a repair engineer, or an installer, explore the possibilities with the Bosch 12 volt range. So let's get started looking at the 12 volt range and what better place to start than looking at our drill drivers and our combis. Right, so here we'll start at the bottom of the range. We have the GSR and the GSB 12V-15. Um, now the name structure on these particular machines, these two in particular, is slightly different from the rest of the range. Uh, on these we quoted the soft torque of 15 newton meters. Um, on the rest of the range we moved to a harder torque, so mar the marketing changed. Uh, so therefore we, we, the naming structure of the machines changed as well. So these are 15 newton meters of soft torque, mm. but actually a, a 13 newton meters hard torque. Yeah, quite impressive actually from a little tiny 12 volt like that. Um, so if I take a look at this one here, there you can go. All the naming structure is displayed across the side here. GSR for the drill driver, the 12 volt and the 15 for the soft torque. We'll cover that in a little bit, little bit more detail shortly. We have the forward reverse button on the side here, as you find on most combi drills and drill drivers, the variable trigger, and the two-speed gearbox on the top here as well. Um, coupled with a 10 mil auto lock chuck uh, and a 20 plus one gearbox. That means we have one locking gear for drill at the top, and you can dial that back with 20 different individual settings uh, that relate to the tightening torque of the fastening. Now they don't have a set value. Uh, you start off at the lowest torque and up it until you get to the, 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 the level at which the screw is seated perfectly. So when we come to the GSB, we're talking about much the same functionality as we do with the GSR, uh, except the addition of the extra mode wheel on the top here. If I turn that round there, you can see we have the screwdriver function here uh, as a separate setting where the torque settings here can be adjusted. Uh, turn that round one click to the drill function, that's straight drill, so there's no torque settings here. This, this wheel here is now redundant. And finally, if I turn to the hammer setting just here, you can see the chuck gains a little bit of movement there, and that's part of the percussion hammer mechanism. So these are quite a high rate of impact um, for, for quite a, a fast Mm. Fast little machine. So with the GSB, you're looking at a BPM rate of 19 and a half thousand beats per minute. Yeah, you remember you and speed two because you will you'd be doing the drilling in most of the harder substrates in speed two. So you're looking at 1,300 RPM. That's a fantastic amount of beats per minute. So you can tell that the uh, there's an awful lot of teeth on the inside of that percussion mechanism. Now, the difference between the two machines is obviously the GSR is going to be slightly shorter because it doesn't have that additional mode wheel, so it's only 169 millimeters. Mm. Um, but the specs when it comes to drilling capacities will be the same. So you're going to be looking at a drilling capacity of 19 millimeters in wood for both machines. You're looking at 10 millimeters in steel. And with the combination drill driver, because this obviously has the percussion system, mm. that allows you to drill 10 mil in red brick. Yep. So a really versatile although compact, very versatile small machine there. You're looking at a similar powered motor, similar power gear ratios in there, giving you the same power mm -hmm. between the two, just that additional percussion factor. Talking about newer machines, the next machine we'd like to talk about is the step up from that. So we're looking at the GSR and the GSB 12V-35. Mm. Okay, one of the significant differences, I'll grab the GSB version, the main significant difference is the fact that this is now running on a brushless motor. Much quieter, much smoother. The fact that it's a brushless motor gives this machine that additional hard torque boost, up to 35 newton meters of hard torque and 20 newton meters of soft torque. The fact that it's a brushless motor also gives you up to 30% longer runtime, so much more efficient, which is excellent if you're running on small batteries. 
When it comes to the functionality, all the same things as we had on the 15, okay? Same mode wheel, same variable trigger, backwards and forwards, etc. So all the same. What you're getting here is brushless motor, more power. Because you've got more power, then you've also got better drilling diameters. Yeah. In wood, for both machines, you're looking at 32 millimeters. Yeah. When it comes to steel, for example, 10 millimeters. And again, with the combi, 10 millimeters drilling diameter. So plenty for your simple jobs. Yeah, when we were thinking about the top speed or speed two on this mm -hmm. machine, we were at 1,300 RPM. That's right. it's, we're now up to uh, 1,750 RPM, which has then also increased the beats per minute up to 26,250. Yeah, essentially it's just a massive upgrade. Yeah. Brushless motor, increasing all the specs, bigger drilling diameters and quicker. Mm. So good upgrade if that's what you want. Yeah. So those are four drill drivers and combis, well, two combis and two drill drivers. One thing that we haven't got on the desk is a machine that's actually a particular favorite of both of ours. I think you've got it. Yeah, this one is small enough to fit in my back pocket. Actually, we have it here. So this is the GSR uh, 12V-35HX. Um, as it suggests, HX stands for the hex bit we've got in the front here. So this takes quarter inch drive hex bits. So we're looking at the 20 plus one gearbox, two speed, variable trigger, uh, like all the others, a little work light on the front there. Nice and compact machine. This one I would particularly like for the short head length. So this is for easy access into all sorts of different places. 126 millimeters, very yeah. small. Very, very small there. Um, again, brushless motor on this as well. So this sits alongside the, uh, the 35 combi here perfectly well. Uh, the two machines together would make quite a nice little kit. So we've got, uh, we've shown uh, mostly you can see here, we've got our four models that are running the 10 mil keyless chuck system. Mm -hmm. We've got our single model here with the quarter inch internal hex. Mm -hmm. So a lot of flexibility. However, I nearly gave it away there. We've got a couple of other machines, which mm -hmm. we have talked about in the past and they're excellent machines because of the extra functionality they give you. Mm -hmm. So let's start off with the first one, which is the GSR 12V-15FC. Mm -hmm. And when we're talking about FC, we're talking about the FlexiClick system, the ability to remove the front end or the chucks, mm -hmm. and then you can put on a number of diff mm -hmm. uh, different adapters. Before we look at those different adapters, we'll look at the different FlexiClick machines we've got. We've obviously got this one here, first of all, which is the 15. This is quite a little bit of an older machine. Uh, this sits kind of like around about the same sort of time that these ones came out. Mm -hmm. And you've got the 35 version up there as well, which again, the brushless version comes around about the same time as these came out. Exactly. So. But you're looking at 15 Newton meters on this one, mm. or 30 Newton meters hard torque, and then you've got a boost of 35 on the brushless machine. Yeah. With all the benefits, as we discussed, yeah. the brushless motor. Really noticeable on that as well. Five Newton meters might not seem much, but really does stand out, yeah. You're looking at uh, your, on your standard 15, your 15 FC, mm. you're looking at drilling diameters of around 19 millimeters in wood and then your 10 in steel. Mm. And then when it comes to the 35, you're looking at 32 millimeters in wood and again, 10 millimeters in steel. These are GSRs, okay? So we mm. do not have a combi version mm. of a FlexiClick system. No. So what we want to look at is we want to look at some of the accessories. What you've got is typically you'll get your FlexiClick and you can buy it in three different versions. You can buy it as you can see here, without the without the three jaw chuck system and without the battery as well. That's so, right. Especially if you're going for if you already have the 15 one and you want to upgrade to the uh, to the 35, you can buy just the body only. Can remember the attachments that we have for the 15 and the 30 are the same. So we haven't sort of designed a full new set of attachments, you can use the attachments that you've already got. So you can purchase the machine like this in a carton. You can buy it with the GFA 12B, okay, in an L-box. And then you can also purchase the machine in an L-box with a whole, with basically all the accessories minus one. Minus one. Okay, so let's start looking at the different accessories that we get with the FlexiClick system. As Danny says, they're backwards compatible, they're, they're compatible across both machines. Mm. The first thing is going to be the GFA 12B, okay? your 10 mil auto light chuck. Plastic collar, mm. but it's nice and light, small and compact and lightweight, which is perfect for the 12 volt system. Yeah. Actually, exactly the same spec as you'd find on any of the other machines that we've got here, with the metal collar at the front here to protect the nose of the chuck. The next accessory you can get is going to be the GFA 12X. As you can see, this is your quarter inch internal hex, perfect the, for your screwdriver bits. This is a mechanical fixing. Um, you can put the quarter inch drive um, in the end of the machine here. Uh, there's a magnetic fixing in there, but if you're tired of uh, having to retrieve the the, uh, the screwdriver bit from the head of the screw, we have a mechanical fixing okay. there as so well. So it's you. captive, you pull the collar back, and that means it's locked in there. Yeah. Okay, so that's the GFA 12X. Yeah, brings okay. it alongside the, um, the uh, 
the HX that we talked about earlier. Similar mount, now we're looking at the offset. So this is the GFA-12E. Now this is the first one which allows me to show the functionality that the FlexiClick system has, which is the ability to change the angle on the head without removing the accessory. Yeah. So as you can see, this is ideal for working really close to walls if you're driving yeah. screws, doing cabinetry yep. and kitchen fitting. Especially, yeah. yeah. Okay, so what you've got is you've got the feature here which allows you just to pull the front of the head out and then you can rotate it. You don't need to remove the entire accessory. Okay, much better, much quicker system. Mm. Okay, also using quarter inch internal hex, it's captive yeah. as well. You get used to that very, very easily as well. There's a lot of people I know who kitchen fit and just leave that on most of the time, to be fair. Okay, another one we've got here is we've got the GFA 12W. I think that's self evident that that is your right angle attachment. Okay, again, if you're working in difficult or small enclosed spaces, the ability to rotate that means you can now work at 45 degrees. Yep. You notice that yes, it does have the quarter inch uh, bit holder here. Mm. Again, it'll be a magnetized, not captive, but you can take any of the additional heads, so the GFA 12X, okay, yeah. and you can add that on there. Yeah. Screwdriving bits, you can do that. I mean, even if it's a little bit tight with, with this particular attachment, just pop it off and use the magnetic part at the end of it, you can get really close, really, really confined spaces with it. And you can see you can combine a combination of bits, including the E. Mm. The GFA 12. And you can twist adjust each one of those individually as well. So, okay, so you can get into well, that's an unusually yes. awkward situation, but you've got ultimate flexibility in yes. running this system. Okay. Again, to point out, if you haven't, if you've only just joined the stream, these all these accessories work on the 35. I'll just do a quick example of that. Okay, and they are really simple to put on. Yep. Simple as that. Mm. Got a locking system here which allows you to lock it, so you've got no chance of that coming off. And again, the ability to adjust yeah. the head, whatever orientation yeah. you need it to be on. With the 10mm chuck, um, you'll also find the locking, You can. It's, there's plenty of space away from the locking ring for, from the actual tightening part of the chuck, so you won't be knocking it loose whilst you're doing the actual chuck up. So. Yeah, so know there's some, some thought gone into Exactly. One thing that we typically do here in the workshop, and I'm sure there's plenty of you guys who own the FlexiLix system, often you'll run your chuck, you'll leave your drill bit in there, and you'll just change the heads. Yeah. You put right. your screwdriver bits in there, and exactly. your drill bits in here, and just change heads instead of accessories. Yeah, if, you, if you're pilot drilling and then screw, screw driving, then perfect. You don't have to muck around with uh, changing your settings too much. So a new GFA, or FlexiClick accessory mm. that we only just added to the range as of the beginning of this year mm. is going to be the GFA 12H. Okay, and surprise, mm. surprise, Danny, it's an SDS Plus adapter. Yeah, as I was as surprised as you were when that, that came through. It's amazing. It's what it's 0.9 joules of impact energy. So if you're putting, for instance, um, curtain poles up, as I mean, it's, it's, a, mm -hmm. it's a, a well a well tried and tested uh, job that most people try and shy away from because of the hardness of the material, something like this running a 10 mil maximum drilling diameter, 0.9 joules of impact, it's a breeze. Uh, plus the fact it's in such a small package, um, carrying it around, especially if you're working a block of flats. I think a, yes. a curtain pole and a block of flats is probably a worst nightmare. I mean, this, this, the FlexiClick system with this STS attachment really sums up what the 12 volt system is all about. Mm. It's a small, compact, yet powerful solution mm. to do a multiple of different applications. Yeah. With all of these different heads and the STS head, it, the FlexiClick system could be replacing up to two or three different machines. Yeah. One thing we'll suggest with the, uh, the GFA H um, is the fact that you run it on the 35 um, Newton meter machine rather than the 15. Mm. Now the purpose of that is um, you're looking at a faster rotation speed and more torque. Not so much for the impact that the machine will provide, but for the turning force to remove the material from the cutting face. So that extra little bit of torque there, you'll get, you'll get much better results from. Mm -hmm. If you're having some trouble with the, this accessory, if you have purchased one already, remember, you need to obviously have it forward. Mm -hmm. You need to have it in the drill mode, not a torque mode, uh, not one of the torque settings, and in second gear. Yep. You yeah. want to keep those, those um, impacts up in, uh, in ratio. So as you can see, we've got a wide range of 12 volt combis and drill drivers. So, Dan, where should we go now? Why don't we head back to the studio for some questions? We're live. Welcome, welcome. So, 
As it is a live stream, don't forget, we want to get you guys to ask us some questions in regards to our 12 volt system. We've got plenty of different sections coming up talking about the entirety of our 12 volt range. So feel free to ask questions about the products that we're presenting. And if you want, if you've got some desires for some 12 volt products in the future, feel free to pop them in the chat. And maybe, maybe Danny yeah. and I can give us, give you our opinion on those. Yeah. Now's the time to be, um, to be letting us know. Mm -hmm. Rob's behind the desk and he's going to be looking through the comments trying to find all the best questions in order to pass those questions to us. So let's start off. Rob, let's have a look. What have we got? So we've got one from FIA00. He says, or they say, in fact, we need a 12 volt SDS plus dedicated rotary hammer drill. The flexi clip attachment is nice but not powerful enough. And what I've also noticed is I might be muted. Yes, there we go. I was <laughs> muted. I can hear you. My mistake. Repeat the question. I will repeat the question. Thank you. Uh, it's from FIA00. They say we need a 12 volt STS plus dedicated rotary hammer drill. The flexi click attachment is nice, but not powerful enough. And of course, the, the SDS attachment's kicking out 0.9 joules. Mm -hmm. So something with a slightly higher joule ratio working with the 12 volt system. Yes, I can see there's definitely, definitely space for that in the range. Not anything that I've heard of recently about. Um, some such no, sort, but um, yeah, again, a great idea. Something we need to well, maybe expand the uh, expand the range on. Well, uh, that was from was that PF cutters, right? So give us an inkling, PF, on mm. what no, kind it was of FIA double oh. O. Yep. Just I just want to make sure it's clear <laughs> who's getting yeah. the right credit for. Oh, sorry, yeah, <laughs> my, my apologies. Yeah, feel free to pop in the chat what kind of specs you're looking at because that helps us dial it in a little bit. Yeah. As Danny pointed out, we've got a, a 10 mil max. 0.9 joule attachment, mm. but yes, it's not a dedicated machine. So yes, mm. there is always going to be some form of compromise. Yeah. As you probably imagine in that video when we were talking about the FlexiClick, really what you've got there is a tool that's designed to fill a number of roles, but, yeah. but not as a specialist machine. So your, your critique is, is well received. Yes, definitely. So we don't have a huge more questions uh, for now, but it's worth noting actually that there's a little bit of a lag with the, uh, with the live stream. So it's about 30 seconds from us asking for questions and then actually getting some answers through. So anything that comes through during the next section of Power Tools, we'll, uh, we'll just get to those afterwards. Uh, Marcus Horn does ask though, uh, anything in the way of a 12 volt stapler? Um, well, <laughs> Not necessarily 12 volt, mm. although there are some rumors uh, that I, it, in regards to the expansion of some of our 18 volt products that yeah. might include a stapler. I can't tell you too much. Uh, but yes, uh, the 12 volt platform is yeah. an ex would be excellent for some form of professional stapler. Yes, I mean, we're expanding um, gradually into more of our cordless nailers. Mm -hmm. um, stands to reason there must be something along the lines um, of a stapler. I would imagine, or a, or a pin gun, something like that. Yeah. Uh, let's just say, although we've not seen any official plans for a product like that, mm. my feeling is... Yeah, that I'd, the, like, that, I'd certainly like to see one. Yeah. My mm. feeling, is, I think Danny and I share our feeling that mm. we kind of expect one, mm. although when, we can't tell you yet. Mm. And why not on the 12 volt system? Because you don't need a lot of actual active power no, to it's drive a, burst. a stapler. It's a yeah. burst to drive a stapler, same as it is with a, with a nail gun. Mm -hmm. It's a burst of energy rather than... The, the longevity and runtime you'd need with a, with a larger Procore battery, for instance. No, you not necessarily. Something yeah. smaller. So then we've had quite a few more come in in regards to various uh, attachments to uh, the FlexiClick system or tools in general. Mm -hmm. uh, so Andy Fadian, or Fadian says, as a heating engineer, we need a 12 volt tire inflator to recharge expansion vessel. Um, and then we've got PF Cutters chiming in with the FlexiClick system asking about a mini chainsaw attachment for the tool. Well, mini chainsaw would be great. Um, I'm not sure, we, we certainly haven't seen anything on the, on the cards for, for that. Um, when you were talking about the inflator, I'm sure I've, I've spoken to a couple of people at a few events. Um, something like a, a Schrader valve inflator, but it has to be a, a longer pipe to run up the back of the boiler and actually um, inflate the, the pressure vessel. I think anything that we currently do is sort of relegated to our DIY range mm -hmm. and would be too short. Um, but I, I know I've certainly mentioned to upstairs, should we say, about uh, something with a longer, longer hose for that particular reason, but I haven't heard anything or seen anything come down the line yet. Mm. In regards to both those mm. types of technologies or those mm. products, as Danny's pointed out, especially if the, uh, with the pump, 
Mm. And also, in some way, to the mini chainsaw, although mm. we don't call it a mini chainsaw, we call it the, the nano blade. It's a nano system. blade, yeah. Uh, within, the, within Bosch, we already kind of have the technology and the patents mm. for these products. Yeah. Whether they migrate over to Pro, if we can find an appropriate use, like you suggested, yeah. then it wouldn't take yeah. long to develop one. It's a niche product. We really need to know if there's mm. much of a market for it before they invest yeah. in, in going into That's it. But the more, the more we hear about it, the more we can funnel back to the... Back to the um, the, the up, people upstairs again. Yeah, exactly. The more the likelihood of us being able to sort of come up with something that's right that would fit that bill. We've covered it in previous live streams. Where remember uh, the strategy that we're doing at the moment is we're filling essential gaps in the range, mm. especially when it comes to the 18 volt. But the 12 volt range is equally important mm. to us as we're going to show now and yeah. with the extra sec uh, sections coming up with the 12 volt range. So trying to fill the fundamental gaps between 12 volt mm. as well as 18 important. But these niche products again really important to know what you kind of want so we can try and see whether or not there's space to develop those. Yeah. So then up next we've got a question from Barry. He says, I'd like to see more ambidextrous setups for 12 volt tools. My son and myself are both left handed and by 12 volt tools uh, and my 12 volt tools feel awkward and are not used as much. Perhaps uh, and I can imagine that you're not meaning the drivers. Perhaps you're probably mm. thinking of some of the system tools, like maybe the circular saw, maybe yeah. I'm trying to think of one that might be a, maybe, oh, the routers are ambi, the planers route. Uh, yeah, there's a mm. few I can understand. Mm. Maybe the circular saw is probably the most obvious one. Yeah. Let us know which ones, in fact. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you can, I mean, if you can, if you can narrow down what it is about the machines that make it awkward, maybe the pendulum functions on the opposite side for the jigsaw mm -hmm. or something like that. Then, then yes. I mean, we have, we have, um, we have brought out some. A whole range of, of left handed or left sided blade bias <laughs> circuit saw. Go ahead, not the uh, tripping <laughs> over that one. Yes. Um, in, in the recent sort of like 12 months. So uh, within the 18 yeah, volt, yeah. Within the 18 volt range, yeah. So if yeah. there's a market for it uh, and it's a truly product that you know truly needs or truly has a, a market for mm. a left and right sided bias, mm. then yeah, we're already doing yeah. it. Yeah. So I'm going to be a little bit more picky now because yeah. there's been quite a few comments that are coming through regarding uh, new tools. PF Cutters is asking about a 12 volt polisher uh, or full fledged 12 volt polisher brushless drill. Um, Andy Fadian liked the idea of a longer hose on the uh, tire inflator. Uh, Neil mentions that unfortunately Bosch Australia refuses to bring the flexi click to Oz, either 12 volt or 18 volt. So people have to look for the grey market. Again, if the. Mm. Um, if Bosch Australia are aware of the situation, I'm sure that they'll uh, start to bring it out over there. Um, well, we might be speaking to our colleagues mm. over uh, in Germany in the next couple of weeks, mm. and we can definitely pass the information on yeah. to the Australian trainer. Mm. Uh, and I'm sure, I'm sure he's already aware. Yeah. So we'll, we'll let, let your comment be known to them directly. Yeah. With regards to the 12 volt polisher that you mentioned, uh, the GRG, I think it is, the, mm -hmm. spot, the spot grinder the, that we released less than 12 months ago, you can get a polishing bonnet for that, for instance, and you can do spot polishing with that. Um, so there are different heads that you can use on, on various machines to use it for polishing. Um, even the, um, the GRO that we're going to talk about a little bit later on in the live stream, um, similar to a, a Dremel kind of rotary tool, again, polishing heads for that for really small detailed work. So Yeah, so um, maybe that product will pop up later on in the stream, mm. and you can let us know if that will do your, yeah. what you're looking for. Cool, so then final couple of questions here. We got one very relevant to the last section that we just had, and then one in general about the 12 volt uh, system. Uh, Eric Braithwaite says, will the SDS bits fit on the 90 degree angle attachment for the FlexiClick system? Well, uh, let me just, just start with putting on the SDS rotary attachment mm. on an additional attachment. Yeah. Probably not. I've, hang on, I've, I mean, I've not checked this. However, whereas we're talking about a normal SDS hammer, the hammer um, is based in the machine, mm -hmm. body of the machine, and that hits the, the pin. In this particular attachment, well, the hammer is in the attachment. So provided you could, you could provide enough pressure to the end of the machine, I don't see any reason why it wouldn't work. I've it, not tried it. I, I preempted that a bit too quickly. I think what I meant to say really is you might get a reduction in performance perhaps because you're going through Because you're more through a 90, yeah. Yeah, but... Yeah. But I think... Uh, nothing, nothing, we haven't really tried it, but that's... Uh, yeah. There you go. Try and give it a go. There you go. So it's still hammering, and you're obviously going to still have the rotary action. So I think it'll probably be okay to Yeah. So, uh, what kind of performance reduction? I don't know. Mm. But it's spec as is for a 10 mil yeah. in, in concrete. Yeah. So if you're using it for something, if you want a smaller hole in concrete, or maybe yeah. if you're just working it in red bricks, 
Because mm. um, it's, it's an all uh, it's yeah. an all encompassing piece of tech that so you, you don't have to rely on a hammer function from the other part of the drill so good question yeah. we no, haven't no. tried it but no. that's that, i think mm. yeah, okay I'll, I'll, I'll give it a go yeah. definitely give it a go but. and then final comment for now before we get into the next section uh ape fred says is the amp share program planned as well for the 12 volt lineup that would be nice wouldn't it not but. officially um yeah amp share is if you're not aware, uh, just the 18 volt platform. Mm. Um, but there are obviously, uh, when I say obviously, I'm not sure, mm. worth checking to see how many of our current partners are running on a, or have a 12 volt range. Not yeah. sure how many. Well, regarding the 18 volt, it's not, the Procore doesn't just mm -hmm. cover the Procore batteries, or sorry, the amp share doesn't just cover the Procore batteries, it also covers the standard call pack batteries. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't see any reason why if they're not creating machines that take the 12 volt, take a 12 volt, volt battery, that they couldn't do the similar thing to that. But, yeah, I'm not that I know of. Yeah, we're, we are, we're, we're, Danny and I It's kind of a pipe dream at the Danny, moment. Yeah. yeah, Danny and I are preparing uh, a live stream where we're going to be talking about the Amp Share Alliance yes. in a way. Yeah. Um, so that will allow us to become far more familiar with what the part, what part, tools our partners have. Mm. Uh, at that stage, we can work out whether or not they have got a 12 volt system, because I'm mm. sure um, if they do, then it will make a lot of sense. Yeah. Right. Because it's not just going. We just don't want it just to be about the 18 volt system. Yeah. Perhaps later down the line we'll get partners that maybe exclusively have a 12 volt range. Perhaps mm -hmm. smaller partners. Mm -hmm. But one one important thing to make uh, one important point to make you know, about Bosch is the fact that when it comes to the 12 volt system, that's not a system that we are looking away from. With some other manufacturers out there, they are starting to move away from 12 volt, and we think you know we don't think that's Mm. necessarily a good idea because mm. the 12 volt system really has its place so we'll see in the future yeah, yeah. Uh, just to summarize again for those who might be just joining the live stream uh, a little bit later um, what we've currently covered um, is we're looking at obviously the 12 volt range of products and the first section we've covered is the 12 volt range of both drill drivers our GSRs mm. and our GSBs so our, our combis our 12 volt combis including our two flexi clip models yeah. What we've established here is obviously the GSRs are our drill drivers, okay, and the GSBs are our combis, and we're running from 15 newton meters of torque to turning force mm -hmm. from the machines over here, all the way up to our 35 models. Yeah. Okay, and for those models, then we're looking at machines that are outputting a max max sorry a hard torque yes. or max torque for 35 newton meters, yeah. which is quite a lot really actually. Yeah. Most of these machines you see here are all running on the. 10 mil chucks or they have the quarter inch internal. So you've got one machine we talked about what we didn't put on the desk behind you. Mm. You've got the HX as well. Yes, the HX is one of my favorite ones. I use this an awful lot in the workshop when it comes to um, assembling things that I've already sort of created as flat packs. Because um, it's literally just a quarter inch driver, really small body on that, really allows you to get into really tight spaces and, and tighten stuff up with a really accurate torque settings on them as well. Mm. Uh, brushless, very low vibration. Yeah, that's one of my go-to favourites, that one. Yeah. So we've already got quite a good number of products in front of us. However, we've got a number of other yeah. screw driving or fixing based machines that we'd like to show you now. So now we're going to look at our range of 12 volt impact tools. Now it's important to note the difference between an impact tool and some of the products we've looked at already, like the combis and the drill drivers. Yeah. Inside an impact tool, there's going to be a hammer and anvil system. There's basically a force multiplier, meaning even though these, these tools are very small, you get much higher torque. Yeah, when we're talking about the, um, the torque multiplier on this, the faster that we can spin that motor, the more impacts per minute, the tighter the torque we can get out of these particular machines. So you'll find that these motors spin a lot faster mm -hmm. than the combis on the drill drivers we spoke earlier. So let's look at the first product in the range, which is going to be the GDR12 V-105, okay? So obviously it's GDR, which is a drill driver. It's got a 12 volt battery platform and it's got 105 Newton meters of max torque. Okay, so you can see already that this has got a lot more tightening force, a lot more turning power compared to just a standard direct drive combi or drill driver. It's got a quarter inch internal hex on the front here, which is captive or mechanical hole, so it's not magnetic. Put that in there, the drill bit won't fall out. Variable speed trigger, backwards and forwards, and as you can see, this particular model has a nice little ring of LEDs here so you can really light up an application, especially when you're in poor lighting. Mm. Okay, it's a very compact machine, only 137 millimeters in head length. So you can see yeah. that you've got a lot of power in a very small package. Yeah, perfect for doing up long wood screws, coach bolts even, um, yeah, in construction. 
yeah. yeah. The, the tool will, is designed for between M4 and M14 bolts. Yeah. So plenty of power in a very small package. The machine has a single speed, but a variable speed trigger giving you up to a maximum of 2,600 RPM. Yeah. So yeah. a great starter machine in the range. Exactly. Where do we go from the 105? So we have here the next one up in the range. This is the GDR 12V-110. Uh, much the same as the previous machine, slightly higher torque at 110 newton meters, but we do have a couple of additional features here. On the back here, we have a selectable speed, so speed one, speed two, and also if we don't need the light, we can switch that on and off manually here. Um, again, forward reverse, 110 newton meters, in um, speed two, you're looking at a maximum RPM of 2,600. As you can see, it's only 139 millimeters in head length, so nice and compact. And in addition, this particular model is brushless, so even more efficient compared to the previous machine. It's a no-brainer, isn't it? And a couple of that with speed two's impact rate of 3,100 up beats per minute. Mm -hmm. That's quite impressive out there, a little tiny machine like that. Okay, Dan, so we've looked at our two GDR models, so our impact drivers, mm -hmm. what's next? Well, it makes sense to have a GDS in the range, so an impact wrench. Uh, now, we haven't gone for a half inch attachment here, because that'd be silly on a, on a 12 volt machine. We have a 3 8 drive attachment here. So this is useful for automotive applications, nut running, just nuts and bolts, tightening prior to, to torquing things down. Fantastically, small machine here two speed uh, on the top here exactly the same as the previous model but this is 115 newton meters mm. um, so slightly higher torque again over and above the 110. There's a lot of similarity between mm. all three of these machines mm. uh, you can see the main difference is that you've got the speed selectors on the 110 and the 115 mm. you've got the ability to toggle the lights these two are also brushless which is great mm. um, and in addition really the difference here is a slightly more torque and the 3 8 drive. Yeah. So you've got a lot of variety just within three different machines. So you That can one get... especially is quite an unsung hero, really. We don't really see much, no. too much of that one, especially when we get asked when, whether we do a 3 8 driver. There you go. So you, you've got a lot of variety between these three machines, so you can pick whichever impact tool suits you within the 12 volt range. Mm. So as we discussed at the beginning of this small section, the impact drivers work differently to mm. combis and drill drivers. And it's that impact force that makes the difference and it's the reason why we can have such high torques, 105, 110 and 115. Okay? But it's an important note that you have to use the correct accessory. But like with any of the impact wrenches that we have here, you'd use an impact socket. Like with the, the one going here. Yep. With the drivers, you'll have to use an impact screwdriver bit like that, designed with a torsion section in there to prevent the uh, the actual bit from shattering um, when you use it on the uh, on impact section. Yeah, we mark that section here in white. This is like a torsion zone, which yep. has a little bit of flex, as you said. Exactly. Yeah, it just takes the the initial shock out of the impact and prevents it from from splitting or shattering. Same thing applies to sockets. So if you've got you're using the 3.8, mm -hmm. you need to make sure you've got an impact rated socket. Otherwise, you're just going to cause damage to yeah. the accessory mm -hmm. or worse, might damage the application as well. Yeah. Interestingly, we do actually in our accessories catalogue have impact sockets available as well. So this is really a summary of our impact drivers and our impact wrench. But we've still got a couple more machines to round off our driver range. Okay, so now we're on to a couple of tools that are relatively low torque, you might be thinking, but these are specialist tools for specific kinds of applications. Exactly. Uh, the first one we'll stop on here is a GWB 12V-10. Um, basically, an angle drill. This has a multi-angled head, so you can drill from straight on or anywhere in between 90 degrees and straight on. Um, we have maximum drill diameter here of 10 millimeters, maximum screw diameter, we're, th we're talking here about six millimeters. Mm -hmm. um, small light on the head here, again, 10 mil screw, forward reverse function here, and a variable speed trigger. Exactly. As we said, as I introduced, these are relatively low torque machines, so this is between three and 10, depending. So this is just for your screw driving applications yeah. in awkward places. Yeah. This product actually predates the FlexiClick, Mm. which again, we've already discussed is an excellent product, but this still has some use in the range because you can see mm. by the long handle and the extended trigger, that means yeah. you can actually activate the tool when holding the machine quite low down. Yeah, in actual fact, the head length in the, with the 90 degree um, attachment on the flex click is basically the same as mm. this. They're very, very close. 
So that's a good bespoke product if that's what you need. Looking onto another specialist product, we've got the GTB 12-11. Now this is a 12 volt drywall screw gun. Mm. Okay, it can be purchased in this orientation. However, you'll see there's some additional accessories to make your life easier if you are a drywaller. This is a three Newton meter machine with a maximum RPM of 3000. Okay, it has a quarter inch internal hex bit holder here in your front here. And you can see on the top, you've got the ability to turn the dial to change the depth gauge. You can see it's here, it's telling you the graphic on here mm. saying, if you turn it one way, the screw will be bedded in uh, deeper, and then vice versa if you turn it the other yeah. way. This is a brushless machine, so again, nice and efficient, and it has a forward and reverse function here. Yeah. Now, this is in its most basic form, but if you are gonna use this tool as a drywalling tool, where you're gonna be putting drywall up or mm. a plasterboard, then really you should be using, or we recommend, it really yeah. makes a difference if you use our GMA or MA55. Here's an example of the GMA55. This in actual fact is the same attachment as you can fit to the 18 volt range. So if you have a light duty job to do and you have the 18 volt system already, you can use the same attachment on here. But basically this allows you one handed operation with this particular machine. So you're not holding the screw in place while you're trying to place the, uh, the piece of drywall. Yeah, it allows you to hold onto a ladder or probably more Mm. importantly to you guys, uh, hold on to the actual plasterboard while you're driving the screws in. Exactly. Now you need to take the front uh, the head off here and you've obviously got your bit holder. That also is removed and you replace it with a longer hex screwdriver bit. You can see this is obviously much longer to go inside the accessory. That simply fits in here and then the GMA55 is friction fitted to the tool. Okay. So now you can see as you depress the tool, it's going to feed a screw in, apply pressure to the motor and then drive the screw into the drywall. Yeah. Depth gate or depth adjustment is done via the wheel here. So you can rotate it down yeah. to, mean, uh, to bring the, the screw up, or you can turn it upwards to drive the screw further into the material if wanted. There's an indicator there as well. So if you, if you are moving from one material to the other, just make a note of where the settings are and you're good to go next time you change materials. Exactly. So if you are drywalling or you are a drywaller, Something like the GTB 1211 mm. is an excellent tool to have in your tool bag. Really lightweight. So that's a very quick summary on a couple more bespoke specialist machines. Mm. Let's go back to the studio. So we're back. Mm. Great range of impact drivers, little impact wrench, and we've got some additional novelty, but nonetheless really effective drivers like the drywall, the GTB for example. Yep. Um, so let's, we'll probably start off with um, asking if you've got any questions, Rob. Absolutely. So Marcus Horn has uh, jumped in there because it just wouldn't be the same if he didn't ask about workwear. Of course. Mm. Makes me wonder whether or not he wears anything other than workwear. Don't want to question that too much. <laughs> um, well, Marcus, you should already know because I think you've mm. already got the heated Jule. But I think he wants more workwear. But as this is a 12 volt related mm. one, we'll just leave it by saying, yeah, of course we do. 12 volt workwear, mate. Mm. Um, I think what he's still asking for is merch. So yeah. maybe what he needs to do is he needs to come to our next show and maybe I'll hand some directly to him. That could be a better idea. Yeah, maybe. But um, other than uh, the workwear range, which we'll get to later, or at least we'll allude to it later mm. on in the live stream, uh, nothing official yet, mate. But I mm. uh, told you, you need to get some more friends to put more pressure on it. Yeah. But at the moment, it's just you, mate. <laughs> So you're not going to uh, include uh, special fogless safety glasses, hard hats, special fire and work trousers, pants, jackets, special gloves, boots too, says PF Cutters. Well, I think uh, when we had our original workwear mm. range, it wasn't that um, expansive. We had safety boots yeah. and we had obviously standard workwear. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of technology now that's going into modern workwear. And mm. it's, I must admit, it's a very competitive field to get into. Yes. Uh, yes. There's a lot of specialists out there that rightly so are very good at what they do. If Bosch were going mm. to try and do the same, we would need to match or exceed what was already out there, and yep. that's a tall order. So uh, nothing official yet, but it's always part of the conversation. You did a work, uh, no, well, you did a live stream on our hand tool range a little while yes, ago. Yes, I did, yeah. And that's a relatively new and very competitive field. Yep. So maybe we'll re-enter the workwear field, but mm. only once I think we've got to the stage where we're confident. Yeah. Yeah. And there's more to come in that particular range. Mm, well, wink, wink, Some there point. is something coming, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, which uh, is innovative and cutting yeah. edge, but we can't say any more. Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's a teaser, isn't it? Oh, it is. <laughs> Spoilers. Uh, <laughs> so, next up, uh, PF Cutters asks, are there plans to bring out a GDX version of the impact driver with a dual half-inch socket and quarter-inch collet for the 12-volt tool? 
I said you've asked for GDX, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, I think the half inch is probably a little bit big for a for a 12 volt yeah. machine. This machine is absolutely fantastic for nut running. Yeah. Um, so for uh, say engine installations or stuff like that, or or just basically swapping parts over. Fantastic. Small, get into tough spaces. Yeah. Um, I'm putting a quarter inch drive into a three eighth head, which is the obvious choice for this machine. Mm -hmm. um, would weaken it. Yeah. Severely, I think that that wouldn't be somewhere where I don't. Think that, that's go. that's why I was pointing at this initially by saying, mm. look, if, we, if we've gone for three, three if we've already gone for yeah. this size, there's a reason why we haven't already bought out a half inch. So adapters are available. You can put mm. an adapter in there, obviously with a quarter inch drive all, all GDRs, impact yeah. bit. Um, exactly. So yeah, that would probably be the way to go, uh, but nothing on the on the cards for um, a three eighth drive with a with a quarter inch um, yeah. internal. Uh, so, I mean, his question is about GDX, but that's yeah. probably the limita limiting factor is the yeah. half inch adapter. It would have to be a half inch, yeah. yeah. Uh, Marcus says, I have the 18 volt drywall gun, a fantastic bit of kit, mm -hmm. and with the power save mode, God like love it. I'm glad you love it. Yeah. The 12 volt isn't as advanced, I have to admit that, because this is a slightly older model. This is more like the previous model from the GTB 18V 45 mm -hmm. and the GMA 55. Uh, this model will use the, the newer. Uh, GMI, GMA 55, yep. essentially they're, very, they're virtually the same to be honest, just a slight update in the, in the materials made. Um, yeah, it's not as advanced, but it's still, pr it's still really, really useful for mm. those out there that don't want to run an 18 volt platform to do drywalling, because yeah. they don't necessarily need it, because you're it. working in softer substrates. Uh, it's got a little less capacity compared to the 18 volt, this one's a, a max of 4 mil screw, um, mm. but still, it's more than enough in most applications. For 18 or 22 mil um, mm -hmm. uh, a plasterboard, yeah. more than enough. Um, plus, fact you can always stick a, a six amp hour or four amp power right, battery yeah. on that to increase the runtime anyway. Yeah, but unfortunately, yeah, lacking mm. that power save function. But that's that's expected because that GTP 18V 45 that came out this year. Mm. Yeah, maybe I say maybe I haven't got any any uh, haven't had any uh, sneak peeks yet mm. to find out whether or not the 12 volt might have an update. But if it is going to have an update, mm. I'm sure it'll come with a power yeah. save. That's it. Mm. Uh, Marcus says he's available for the merch, just so you know. <laughs> of course he is. Uh, Andy Fa uh, Fadian says, love my 12 volt heated jacket. And uh, Radin0121 is asking about a Bosch Pro Work backpack. I don't know whether that's referring to, say, uh, a tool bag, but just in backpack form. Let us know. Yep. Yeah, get in the chat, tell us what your what you're specifically looking for, for yeah. in a backpack. There's a lot of things you can put in a backpack. If you can, yeah, if you can find one out there or an image of one out there, then drop us an image in, and we'll uh, well, we'll see if we can. How uh, are you going to do that in YouTube? Yeah, yeah. Uh, comment section afterwards. Do you, what images? In the I'll, I'll, I'll leave you to work that one out. Oh, you, I you see. Can, so you can sort that yeah. one out. <laughs> um, just let us know what functionality you want in a backpack. Yeah. Is, uh, wait, is this a, was this a powered backpack or just a backpack? Doesn't mention powered. Mm, mm. I think mm -hmm. a, if there isn't a sit on. No, no, no. Now no, I'm no. thinking, what can I put in there's 12 volt? Quite a few things, actually. Let us know what you mean. If you just want a normal nylon backpack, we had a question about that previously, um, and we were just joking about the fact that we usually just sling the end bag on our back, really. Yeah. I know mm. it's a duffel, but yeah. Maybe a dedicated backpack. We've had that question before, and we mm. agree. It's a simple thing to produce, yeah. I suppose. Yeah. Uh, and final question before we move on to the next segment. PF Cutter says, that right angled screwdriver that you have in your hand, Danny, mm -hmm. we need a brushless version for this tool. Also in different sizes, like in quarter, three eighths, half inch, Bosch. Mm. Yes, there was a, there was a um, similar machine to this that was a quarter inch drive. I don't think we do it anymore. GWI. The GWI, yep. 10.8 then. Yeah. Yeah. That was, yeah, ten, that was 10.8. So uh, quite an old one, that one. A little bit shorter. Smaller head length, really handy for getting into smaller places. However, the flex click kind of um, solves, a lot, most, of that, solves it? a lot of those problems. But there is still a market for that out there, and we fully understand it. Um, I've not seen any um, any plans for something like that being updated or brought to the market soon. But again, um, sometimes we get we get machines almost land on our desk and yeah. not having heard about them at all. So. Yeah, yeah. Can, the, the, the FlexiClick yeah. system is mostly our solution for these kinds of applications. Yeah. We understand with the GWB mm. that the long handle and the long trigger is quite helpful. Yeah. But at the moment, I don't see much plans for us updating this solution. Mm. The FlexiClick is solving a lot of the problems for our users out there. Yeah. But again, 
if we get a lot of demand for an updated version of this type of tool, mm. inevitably, it'll yep. be brushless. That's what we're gradually um, doing with yeah. the rest of our tools, and this is still current in the mm -hmm. range, so yep. yeah, we're gradually working through them, uh, changing them from brush to brushless, so yes, potential down the line, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So if we're out of questions, uh, we'll have a quick summary, basically just talking about this small section in regards to alternative drivers. Mm -hmm. And we talked about our impact driver range, so our GDRs, we've got two versions here, and obviously our GDS with our, our 3.8. Yep. These are all our high torque machines, so we're looking at uh, 100 and... 105, 110, 110 and 115. And, 115. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then when it comes to our special stills, we've got uh, a slightly older machine, the GWB 12E-10, mm -hmm. um, but really uh, the other one I really like is the GTB 12V-11 with mm. the GMA or the MA55, so our collated screw gun. So a really good range to fill out our drivers. What we're going to move to next, Dan, I think, is woodworking. So let's queue it up. So as you can see here, we've got quite a large range of woodworking tools in our 12 volt range. So let's start off with sawing. So first machine up in the sawing section is going to be the GSA 12V-14. This is a 12 volt reciprocating saw. It's got a maximum cutting depth of 65 millimeter in wood, but it can also do metal profile of 50 millimeters. The name comes from the 14, in this case, 14 and a half millimeter stroke length. So the total distance that the blade will move backwards and forwards. Okay, it doesn't weigh much at all. Without a battery, or see, with a battery actually, it's 1.2 kilograms. So mm. it weighs very little. In addition, it's got the nice toolless blade chain system, so you don't actually need any tools to place the blade in, and then you're away to go. Very simple, very straightforward tool. Excellent because when it comes to recip saw blades, there are so many recip saw blades in the Bosch range, which means you can work in all kinds of material from wood, metal, plastics, even brick. That's it. It's a perfect little demolition tool, in fact, when it comes to things like that. Window frames, anything like that. You you can, uh, you can get it, because if it's compact size, get it in all sorts of difficult places. Yeah, but as this is in the wood cutting section, mm. it makes a really good first demolition or first cutting tool. Mm. Next up, we have the GKS 12V-26. The 26 name comes from the full cutting depth of the blade, which is actually 26 and a half millimeters. Mm. So fantastic little cutting tool here for doing longer straight stretches of material, perfect for stuff like laminate flooring. Yeah, it runs a 85 millimeter blade that allows you to get that depth of cut. I think you might have mentioned 1400 uh, RPM as well. So no, nope, I hadn't, but it's a very good point though. F quite fast motor here, which means you get a nice, clean, smooth cut. Yeah, it's, you can put it on a bevel. I think it's up to 45 degrees, yep. giving you a maximum cut of 17 millimeter. Mm. But typically speaking, this is an excellent tool if you're just working in single sheet ply or OSB. Yeah, beauty of this as well is it also fits completely compatible with the guide rail system, our FSN system, mm -hmm. um, and our older system as well. So it's cross compatible between both and also cross brand, I think as well. Yeah, it's a nice compact machine. Mm. It weighs just under one and a half kilo, 1.4 kilograms. So nice, light, compact, yep. more than enough work to do single sheet. Exactly, all, even down to the fact that the, uh, the tool needed for adjustment is all included in the package as well. Slips seamlessly into the back of the base plate there. Yeah, another 12 volt unsung hero, I reckon. Mm. Now moving on to the GST 12E-70. This is our 12 volt jigsaw. It's in the name 70 again, is going to be the maximum depth of cut in wood, which is going to be 70 millimeters. Okay, it has a, a speed dial on the back here. It's got a number of speed settings giving you from one and a half thousand to 2,800 SPM strokes mm. per minute. Okay, the stroke height on the, on the machine is 18 millimeters and it weighs in at barely anything, 1.5 kilograms. Yeah, the that base is also adjustable as well, so you can get a 45 mm -hmm. degree bevel on that. Now you might notice this is a barrel grip jigsaw. Obviously, I think putting a, a bow handle on it would be a little bit too restrictive, mm -hmm. but fantastic for doing nice tight turns, um, really comfortable to hold. Now the machine has its uh, quick blade system, so if you've got a spare blade for me to put in. Do. There you you'll go. see. Watch your fingers with that. Thank you. You'll see that again, complete tooler system or SDS system locks in like that and sprung loaded. So when these blades get hot in use, you don't need to be, dish, you know, you're trying to fish that out with glove fingers yeah. or anything like that. Even managed to squeeze in a pendulum action on there as well. So all the features and benefits of our 18 volt range all crammed into a little 12 volt package. So two stage pendulum, as you said, a great little product. So we've covered cutting or sawing. Mm -hmm. Let's move on to shaping. 
Starting off now with a 12 volt planer. This is the GHO 12V-20. It's a nice compact machine, very lightweight at less than 1.5 kilos with a node load speed of 1400 or 14 and a half thousand RPM. It has a maximum planing depth of two millimeters. It's all done by the adjustment wheel on the front here, zero to one. And then you can press this button down here to give you the maximum planing depth of two millimeters. It has a maximum rebate depth of 17 millimeters and a max planing depth of 56 millimeters. Makes so, it perfect for doors, so, absolutely perfect for doors. If you're fitting doors on a daily basis, that's the machine for you. Okay, you have your safety fit, safety button on the side here and your normal speed trigger. You have the ability to store additional planer blades at the back here. Nice and easy and convenient, so it's all on the machine. You can also change the direction in which the material that is ejected comes out, so you can have it on a left or right setting. So a nice compact machine. In addition, you can also set it to zero, so it makes a nice parking function so you don't damage the material. Mm. I've also got a chippings or a dust bag. This yes. is an optional accessory that we don't issue with the machine, but if that is something you would like, you can pop that onto the tool as like this. And that keeps that keeps your work site or wherever you're doing your planing much tidier as opposed to one without. Yeah, this is fitted with a standard single wood blade or wood razor, mm -hmm. uh, which are the incredibly sharp reversible blades that we make. Um, again, for any of the additional items in any of these machines, always check the back pages of the user manual should you'll find a good selection of items that you can use to add additional applications to your machines. That's right. You can see here it is a single blade. You get two blades as part of the standard retail packaging. Uh, and in addition, you can see you've got a single chamfer. Yes, that's it. Okay, Dan, over to you. Right, so the next machine is the uh, GKF 12V-8. Lovely little trim router mm. we've got here. Really unusual shape, a uh, few innovative design features on this particular model as well, make it really useful for most applications, in fact. Um, you might notice a slightly unusual shape of the machine. It sits there really nicely in the palm of the hand. We've got a simple one switch on off on the side here. Um, it doesn't have a plunge function, but you can adjust the depth via this button here, slide the base into position, release it to lock. Um, you can fine adjust using this knob at the bottom here. And on the back, we've got a locking um, switch here that, mm -hmm. that locks it all off for you. Um, you might notice as well, we have an offset base. So the cutting head is sitting over to one side here. Um, basically, that allows you to move around the piece of material, if I show you here, uh, with the maximum amount of base on the actual material itself. So far more stable, um, much easier, less fatigue when it comes to actually operating the machine. Right. It's got a no load speed of 13,000 RPM. And in addition to the quarter inch collet, you can also use, or you can purchase separately, a six mil or an eight millimeter collet. That allows you to use a lot of the European or widely, widely available in Europe mm. uh, router bits as well. So if you have pre-existing router bits, you can adjust this to be able to use those. Yeah. Both excellent tools. Mm. And actually, we didn't mention it, but it's important to note these are both brushless power tools as well. Yeah. So not only to get all that ergonomic features mm. and benefits, but the actual machine themselves will run more efficiently due to that brushless motor. It's important to mention as well, this also comes with a spanner. So what more could you ask for? <laughs> so that's shaping. Let's move on to sanding. So now we're looking at sanders, we're looking at the first one here, which is the GEX 12V-125. As you can imagine from the name, this is a 125 millimeter sanding disc diameter running 125 millimeter accessories. The machine itself is a brushless motor, giving you a no load speed of 6,000 to 10,000 RPM and has an orbital stroke rate of 12,000 to 20,000 OPM. It has a hook and loop feature here to attach the accessories. And I've got an example here of some of our M480, so our net system. And it simply pops onto the backing pad like that and you're away to go. You have a six speed selection, or I should say a variable speed wheel with six detents in there. And then you have a nice large button on the front here, which is easily activated, even if you're using large or cumbersome gloves. Mm. The dust bag on this particular product isn't too bad, actually. It's very good compared to some of our previous machines. However, if you do want to use a dust extractor, you can quite easily use any of our GAS systems with a friction fit adapter to pop on the normal dust extractor as you'd go to keep your workplace nice and clean. It's worth mentioning at this point, it's um, the collar on the dust extraction accessory here. Um, you might want to adjust that for the airflow, else you'll pop this on the material that you're trying to sand 
and it would stick fast to it. So if you can break the vacuum with this, you get perfect dust extraction. Remember this machine has a fan built into it, same as actually both of these machines mm -hmm. do, which lifts the material away. So that's why we explain the dust bag is really good on these. Right, yeah, with the M480 system, as you can see, because it is a mesh system, it means you're getting up to four times better dust extraction. And that benefits even more when you're running mm -hmm. active dust extraction. When it comes to like, the vibration on the machine, well, the fact that it's also quite an ergonomic machine, we can talk about later, but the vibration level on this is so low, it's 2.2 meters per second squared, mm. which means technically you could use that all day, no problems. So that's the GEX 12V-125. Danny, you've got a different machine. Yep, the next machine in the lineup here, we've got the GSS 12V-13. Um, as it would suggest, this is a sheet sander. Um, we're talking a third sheet base here, it comes with a quarter sheet base, which we have just there, and the delta base here. So it comes with those three different bases. Uh, we also have the paper stamp on here as well for if you're using or cutting paper to the size of the base that you're using so you can actually stamp the holes in there for best dust extraction. Again, you, this can be used along with the M480 sanding solution that we have anyway. Um, You've comes, got some C480 on there, yeah? This has got the C470, ah. which is the paint uh, and wood removal. So this stuff is, is really good abrasive material. Specs of the motor and the, the speeds are exactly the same as the previous machine here. It's just the fitting mechanism on the bottom is different. Mm -hmm. Now you mentioned the different backing pads or the base plates that you can change. Yep. Uh, important to note, it's really easy to change. If you take off the sanding sheet here, you'll see it's only four Torx bits. Yep, you can see it just on here. If I pull the, uh, the C470 sheet off, there's literally four small Torxes there. Undo those switch the base, so, uh, base is over, just pop the new one back on. So there you go, our range of 12 volt sanders with the GEX 12V-125 random orbital sander and the GSS 12V-13 sheet sander. So that's a good summary on a lot of our woodworking tools, so I think let's go back to the studio. So you can see we've got here a quite a large range of woodworking power tools. So have we got any questions for this section? Great question. Uh, <laughs> so uh, we've got one that I just saw pop, on, pop in. Uh, there's plenty more to go through as well. But um, curious one, Vadeen0121 says, why would you buy a separate sander when you can use the multi-tool as a sander? Good question. Yes. In actual fact, the multi-tool works very well as a sander, mm -hmm. but only on the small heads, the, like the, uh, the, the small the delta heads. Um, with this particular sander, the GSS, um, it's a slightly larger head, it's a 90 mil delta head. So you've got the small delta at the front, but you've also got a section at the back as well, so it just covers more area. Yeah, yeah and that's both of them, the GSS and the GEX. If you, yeah. yeah. Um, we actually say quite a lot that the, mm. the multi-tool, so the GOP 18 v 28 with that sanding attachment is really good. Yeah, it's, it got, it's got more of a swing on the, on the, um, the angle for the machine, the oscillating angle. Um, than most delta mm. sanders do, so very good point there. If you buy the um, obviously the the, the um, latest uh, delta pad as well, it's quite soft, so it's quite pliable, a little bit more yeah. so than, than some of the bases here. There's two factors to consider uh, when using a multi-tools sander. A, yeah. the one that Danny's already articulated, which is the fact that yes, it's effective, but much smaller. So you're going to have to use that multi-tool a lot more. Mm. But also don't forget that multi-tools were always originally supposed to be problem-solving machines. They weren't really necessarily supposed yeah. to replace a primary product like a, yeah. a recip saw or a, a sander. So consider one important factor from a health and safety perspective, which is these sanders have virtually no vibration. Multi-tools yeah. typically exert a lot more vibration. Although, yes, we have got a model that's coming out very soon that's got reduced hand and arm mm. vibration values. But these machines, you're looking at 2.2 meters per second squared, yeah. which means you could actually legally use these all day. Mm. They don't exceed the minimum requirement to even yeah. count as a, a vibrating yeah. tool. Right? Yeah. Better be careful what I say there, but no, yeah. the vibration is so much lower on a sander. So if you are sanding all day, a multi-tool probably wouldn't be my choice. Yeah, I mean, if you're doing, for instance, to, to sort of sum it up, if you're doing larger areas where you're gonna be running into detailed parts, mm then go with the GSS. But if we're doing just detailed sanding work, probably go with the, the multi-tool, the GOP. Yeah, good question. We could spend mm. all day talking about yeah. why and why not. But mm. yeah, I'm sure there's loads of people that quite rightly use a multi-tool, which we'll, we'll cover in a later section. Mm. So we've got a good question here, but I think you could dive into a little bit. It's from ENG underscore ALV90. And they say, 
I see a pattern here. The 12 volt lineup seems unattended for the most part. Oldish tools whose specs are no longer class leading, plus a few segments left out like ratchets and circ saws. I see no problem with my 18 volt tools because there are new tools every few months, but that's not the case with the 12 volt. So far, I only have kept my 12 volt Dremel and a flashlight, but everything else is long gone. We as consumers need commitment to the 12 volt lineup if we want to stick to it to long term. I can't be the only one thinking the same. Yeah, I mean, these two, these two that I've got here up on the end, the, um, the GSS and the GEX Sanders, they're both within the last maybe 18 months they've mm -hmm. come out. Um, there's a, yes, there's an 18 volt version of them, but these are 12 volt versions of those 18 volt versions. So we are still dedicated to the 12 volt range. Mm -hmm. um, Yes, we've got. It's it's, a few, there's a few new machines yeah. as well that we haven't covered yet. Mm. But your point is that yes, there isn't a, there isn't as many 12 volt machines, yeah. and that is reflected in the market. The market mm. is very very heavy on 18 volt and, and above in some cases. But again, prim primarily, most of the market's in 18 volt. What is differentiating us from many other competitors is we're not just discontinuing the 12 volt range. Yeah. Yes, some of them are older, older, not old and dis and obsolete. Maybe not class mm. leading. That we're talking 12 volt here, yeah. but yeah, they haven't been updated as much. Mm. We acknowledge that. Yes. But That's what okay. we're saying here is we're not getting rid of our 12 volt range. Mm. Instead, we're adding to it, not as quickly as 18 volt, but over time. You'll see that there are other products, not just uh, power tools, that are also using the 12 volt battery platform. So we are looking at the platform as a whole, mm. not just power tools. Um, but we take your point. We take we take your point that yeah, there isn't as much development in 12, and that is correct. Yeah. Yeah. Fashions change, uh, popularity changes, different voltages change. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Unfortunately, that's always going to dictate the market to a certain degree anyway, because at the end of the day, everyone's trying to make money here. Mm. Uh, but be uh, be fully aware that we are not moving away from the 12 volt. The 12 volt is here to stay, and we are still putting uh, the finance behind it to maintain it and move it on in the market. Mm. Um, so moving on from there, we've got a question from PF Cutters that's uh, cunningly worded, mm -hmm. I think here. He says, um, that router that you are showcasing, <laughs> showcasing, it is just only for edges. Would there be a regular router in the 12 volt version coming out along with the 18 volt router that is come to fruition next year? That's a hint, hint, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, um, yes, it is an edge router. Um, it's got quite a bit of beef. Yeah, no, beef, uh, beans. Yeah, <laughs> beef and beans. Um, but you are right; it's an edge router, uh, and maybe the, maybe you feel free to answer it as well. But it's, yeah. it's about power. I mean, the twelve volt platform has its limitations, mm. um, and routing can be quite a heavy uh, high, high draw application. Yes, well, I mean we've got a six hundred watt uh, GKF six hundred mm -hmm. um, still in the. Um, is that's, again, that's more of a trim router. Um, I believe there was something happening around that. Uh, not corded wise, mm -hmm. still corded, but I uh, can't really say too much about that, but there is something happening there in the background. Um, I guess, what, if you don't mind me, I think what you're saying is mm. anything bigger, mm. than, anything larger than just an edge router, yeah. we're looking at products that are over 600 watts-ish. Yes. Right? Yeah. If you look to any of our live streams where we're talking about the 18 volt platform, mm. you realize that you know, that's about 800 watts of power on a standard battery mm. and then more when you jump up to a pro core 18 volt battery. Again, 16,000 corded equivalent up to 2,000 corded equivalent yeah. watts of power. 12 volt has its place, and, but the limiting factor here for 12 volt is mm. just, it just doesn't have enough raw power to do anything other than maybe a, an edge router, perhaps. Yes. As, as batteries get more efficient, I mean, this is a brushless motor, a very mm. good brushless motor in here. But maybe it's asking too much to be other, anything other than an edge router, mm. is what I'm saying. Yeah. Is that, and maybe, and I said, maybe you're leaning into the point about the 18 volt. Yes, the 18 volt, the elusive 18 volt router. Mm. Fingers crossed coming out next year. Um, still going to be quarter inch. Yes. Um, but I haven't got enough details to tell you whether or not we'll be moving away from being an edge router. Mm. We'll, we'll find out when we find out. Mm. OK, so a few more questions coming in. In fact, I'm going to make a, a couple of comments on here. Uh, Radin is asking about the Bosch rewards, i.e. pro deals, that are coming out uh, after the uh, 31st of this month. Unfortunately, you're just going to have to wait and check out the website on the 1st of September to find out any news about that. Um, and Mountain Dweller is asking about the brushless sound of a GSS 12V-40, not available, um, I believe in the UK. It's on the American Bosch website. Uh, only the GSS 12V-13 is available. Have you heard of a 40? 
Uh, well, the Americans yeah. tend to use a different a key metric. Di yeah, it's a completely different naming structure. That's I'll have a I'll look at it. I'll have a look and see and maybe make some comments in the next Q&A section. Mm. Uh, my guess is, unless it's drastically different from the 13, it might just be the 13. Yeah. Uh, I'll have a look at it, unless you want to put in the comments what the difference is. What could, but mm. I'll we'll have to look it up because yeah. they sometimes be are similar. The same thing. It could be mm. the same thing. They're sometimes similar, but the US market has some different products as well. So yeah. let me look it up. The GSS 12V-40, yeah? Yes. OK. Yeah. And final question before we move on to the next section. Anything that we've missed now, we can always cut back to afterwards. But we've got a question from Espen. And they ask, will there be a bi-turbo 12-volt tool? Good uh, question. Um, well, I reckon there's, a, there's mm. a theory here. And I'll probably say, probably not. Probably not. And the reason being. Yeah. Uh, it's it's kind of how we categorize a bi-turbo machine, yeah. and it has to be a certain power grade. Yeah. Uh, and the 12-volt machine batteries, even if we were to upgrade the batteries to 21700 cells, yep. I don't think that they'll deliver enough power to get that bi-turbo sticker. I, I don't think there'll saying. be enough cells. Because I mean, as we cover a little bit later on when we cover some a little bit of battery tech with them, 12-volt um, batteries only got the three cells in it. Mm -hmm. So even if we up upgraded that to the three 21700 cells, it still wouldn't be putting up out mm -hmm. enough um, corded cord cord equivalent amps yeah. to uh, to power a bi-turbo version of yeah. one of these machines. Uh, and remember that the aim with bi-turbo brushless and the mm. Procore 18 volt batteries is to reach a corded equivalent performance. Mm. And 12 volts not really about raw power. Hopefully from the intro you saw mm. and what we've been showing throughout the live stream, a lot of what you get with 12 volt is light, compact machines, really ergonomic, mm. easy to get into those difficult places. It's not about pure power. Mm. That's like you say, that's yeah. where Bi-Turbo really rests its head. Yeah. Okay, so we should move on. A quick summary, just to say, a really great range of 12-volt woodworking tools. However, we've got some more tools coming up, uh, and I think we're going to go to metal metalworking next. Yeah. Okay. So when it comes to the 12-volt range of metalworking tools, where better than to start with the GSC 12V-13? This is our 12-volt metal shear. The name comes from the maximum cutting capacity in steel of 1.3 millimeters, and it has a maximum cutting depth of 2 millimeters in aluminium. The tool itself is relatively straightforward with a single activation button here on the front, which gives you 3,600 strokes per minute with a maximum, sorry, minimum curve diameter cutting radius of 15 millimeters. Yeah. It's got a simple battery indication button here to see whether or not you Let's see how full your battery is, essentially. Yeah. In regards to the blades, you can actually get more life out of them because they can just be simply rotated. Yeah, yeah it's a simple Allen key. Remove, rotate, do the Allen key back up again. Yeah, so when it comes to a metal shear, don't really need much more than that. We do have them in 18 volt, but the 12 volt range is equally powerful. Moving on from the shear, we've got our GWS 12V-76. Mm. This is a 76 millimeter diameter disc, basically an angle grinder or an angle cutoff tool. Mm. Okay, obviously running on the 12 volt battery platform, it's got a maximum RPM of 19 and a half thousand RP, uh, rotations per minute. Really does make for a fast cutter and getting into those small, difficult uh, places, or for automotive reasons or anything like that. Activation is done by the simple lock on switch here, and you've got the quick and easy simple spindle lock on the top here when changing the yep. accessories. It comes with both a cutting and a gr uh, grinding guard, so you've got it covered from all directions there. Uh, also comes with a carbide multi-wheel, which is the one we have currently fitted to it. The newer versions of this are blue in colour, so they're part of our expert range. And it also comes with two Inox uh, cutting blades, first stainless steel or mild steel. Right, so moving forward from our cutting machine, because this is primarily for cutting, uh, we have a grinding machine as well, a spot grinder, the GWG 12V-50S. 50 denotes the maximum uh, disc size that you can fit to this particular machine, and the S refers to the speed control function you have on the back here. If I, uh, I move that up and down here, you can see I can control the speed via the buttons on the back here. Also gives me a handy indication of, there you go, the battery um, capacity. So I'm not gonna be worrying about running out of power when I'm on the job. We've also on the top here got the spindle lock, very similar to the, the last one we looked at. Simply pull it up, spindle's locked to change your accessory nice and easily. Um, we have a variable speed trigger. Um, again, a nice compact machine. Um, eight millimeter collet 
perfect for most applications when it comes to cleaning or grinding. You've got a lot of flexibility of this machine. Because you've got that variable speed trigger, it's excellent, but because you've got those five speed settings, you've even got mm. more control. That's you've it. got set speeds of 5,000, 7,000, 10,000, uh, 12,500, and 15,000 RPM preset on the back, but you've That's always it. got that variable speed trigger mm. if you need extra control. There's so many different accessories for this out there, be it flat wheels, sanding wheels, or in this case, scotch wheels. Mm. So that's three of our 12 volt metal working tools, but there are a number of tools that we've already covered that can technically be used within the metal working or the metal processing range. Mm. Obviously, we've already covered the GSA 12V-14, a simple change of the accessory to a metal blade. This one's got one of our expert carbide blades for cutting, well, this one's multi-material, mm. easily do metal, and we've obviously got bespoke blades for metal. Then this recip saw is an excellent machine mm. for processing metal. And we've also got the GST 12V-70, a uh, perfect little machine here for cutting anything from uh, wood, metal, even up to carbon fiber and ceramic tiles with some of our specialist blades. Yeah, when it comes to metal working, the fact that we've got expert stainless steel blades mm. makes a jigsaw just as capable as yeah. any other machine at working very hard metals. Mm. So that's metal working in a nutshell. I'm sure you've got plenty of questions. Let's head back to the studio. So welcome back. Yeah. Looked at uh, just a quick section there looking at uh, three of our metal working tools. Um, honestly, excellent miniaturized version of the tools that we've kind of got all yeah. in the range. I mean, I guess we don't really have this kind of cutoff grinder in the 18 volt range. Not really. This is more of a, yeah, more of a cutoff tool. Um, however, really useful at uh, stuff like exhaust removal or getting yeah. into really awkward situations. Um, this has been around a little bit longer than this machine, but the fact that they've stuck with the design between the two, they, they make a perfect set together. Yeah, the GWG, uh, yeah. we were making that comment about, or we had one of those previous comments that we're not putting enough into 12 volt. I guess in volume, perhaps, not compared to 18 volt, yeah. but this is a good example of a brand new product within the yeah. range that we've never had and suits the 12 volt range really well. Yeah. You like this tool quite a lot specifically, don't you? Yeah, I mean, stuff like alloy wheel refurbishment or spot paint repair or anything like that. I know I go on a little bit about the motor industry. But, um, I do originally <laughs> come from it, and I can I can see the the allure of this particular machine for a lot of applications that I've had to do in the past. Yeah. So yeah, it makes perfect sense. Um, again, fantastic little yeah. machine, and a lot of power as well. It's quite it's quite tricky to actually bog it down when you put some pressure behind it. And as you probably saw through the video, it really does eat through um, corrosion like yeah. nobody's business. Again, it's utilising the fact that it's small, really short head length, mm. really easy to get into those difficult places, yeah. which again is where 12 volt really sinks. In regards to the shear, it's it's very similar to the 18 volt mm. machine, just slightly well, just smaller and running on the 12 volt battery. Very mm. similar to those sanders that we looked yeah. at previously. Now uh, we had a question previously about the, maybe the American model of the sheet sander, yeah. uh, the 12 V-13, and I think you had the V-40. 12, yeah, V-12. Sorry. 12 V-40. Uh, and I think you saw in the chat there that maybe you thought it's because it's. Uh, their one is brushless. No, no, all the new GEXs and the GSSs mm. are all brushless machines. I can, if you put over on the overhead camera, you can see that the 13 is also, in this design, these are all brushless machines. So I will look, I'm still going to look on the website, on the American website, to find out exactly which model it is. Mm. I'm thinking it's probably the same at this rate, but we'll, yeah. we'll see, we'll see. So we could we could have used a different metric for measuring hours, whereas that could be forty thousand oscillations per minute or something. We've used something else to name hours, but we'll oh. dig down into it a little bit later and find out. Now um, we obviously made a, before we get to the questions, we want to make an honourable mention, obviously that. Um, or maybe we did it in the video, I can't mm. remember actually. Uh, we talked about different products that also do metal work, and obviously we've got the GSA, the recip mm -hmm. saw, and if you were to combine that with, say, an expert blade like our expert thick, tough metal blade, mm -hmm. um, then that would make this a really great combo. Yeah. Okay? You might not want to be running the largest blades on this in, in harder materials, possibly, no. because it's a smaller machine with a shorter stroke length, but with a expert carbide blade, that can do a lot of heavy lifting in all kinds of metal, extremely yeah. hard metal as well. Taking down modern partition walls um, with the metal studding in them, absolutely perfect, something like that. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to metal working with a jigsaw, there's no reason why you can't use something like a GST, mm -hmm. a 12 volt GST, and run it using one of our, like a stainless steel blade. Mm -hmm. If I cut over to the overhead camera very quickly, these are my, one of my personal favorites. So our expert T118 AHM 
expert for stainless steel. These blades, I absolutely love these. Mm. Um, if you try to use a bimetal in stainless steel, you'll get you barely get an inch. With mm. this, I was cutting probably feet. It, yeah, it, it was literally strips off of the pieces yeah. of just the stainless steel. So uh, yes, although the 12 volt might not have as much power mm. as an 18 volt machine, if you if you join it with a expert accessory like the stainless steel blade or similar, um, and, and the correct thickness, that can do a lot of work for you despite yeah. only being 12 volt. Yeah. So Rob, uh, have we got any questions? We do indeed. So we've got one here from Neil who says, glad to know that Bosch is committed to the 12 volt range unlike other manufacturers. The tools I am looking forward to are a riveter, nibbler, stapler, slash nailer, and the range of impact wrenches for auto. Just a statement, really, but mm, I yeah, guess yeah. any okay. comments on that? Well, well, you made a mention about automotive. Um... We do have a rivet gun, but only in 18. Mm -hmm. um, having one in 12, yeah, seems, seems like a perfectly plausible thing to do. Uh, you made um, a mention about impact drivers for auto. I guess it's uh, automotive, and you think mm. the our little GDS is pretty good for that already? Yeah, for, for nut running, for stuff like just uh, just engine building, that sort of stuff. Obviously, you're going to go over afterwards and talk everything down, but if you. Again, maybe run... he's asking for half again, half inch. Um, half inch, again. Um, not in the 12 volt range, I very much doubt it. But we do have we do have well a vast range in the in the 18 volt range for impact drivers. You can just take your pick as to how much torque you want. So yeah, everything up to um, 1,000 newton meters. Uh, it's about 1,800 newton meters. Oh, sorry, 1,800 newton meters breakaway torque. So yeah, we've mm. got some some really big machines up in that sort of range. Um, but again, 12 volt, not so much. No. Yeah, yeah. Three eighth only. We'll look. We'll, we'll take that list and mm. we'll go through it and we'll. Uh... We'll pass up the line. Yes. PF Cutters is joining in again to ask about uh, my turbo because, yeah, we covered it before, but he's suggesting um, if not a bi turbo 12 volt, how about a mini turbo <laughs> or single turbo 12 volt tool <laughs> with half of the bi turbo power from 18 volts for the more labor intensive 12 volt jobs? First thing, what, what will be the case is um, if, if and when we uh, transition from an 18650 cell powering the 12 volt battery yeah. to what was currently the Procore technology, the Procore 18 volt battery, which is the 21700 cell, yeah. then perhaps what you might be looking at is the possibility of running more powerful tools. Yeah. Whether we'll change the name of it, I don't know. Um, See, so what we want to do, um, as we 2015, sorry, 2005 is when we came up with the 12 volt range with the standardized 12 volt battery, and um, we've stuck with that, but you'll find on most of these machines, the battery is a stick battery and it fits inside the machine. And we want to stick with a battery platform that's going to work on all of our machines. So if we were to upgrade this to an 80, sorry, 21700 cell, three of those in there, yeah. that's going to limit the compatibility or backwards compatibility to the batteries. I mean, we could, ha we could have a, a stick type battery, with um, same as with the, the larger ones here, with the double stack battery. We could do that and only have three Procores or 21700s in the base, yeah. but then you're going to be looking around around about the same performance as one of these anyway. So yeah, there's um, there's different ways around it, I think, but at the moment, I don't think there's anything planned. Yeah. No. All good suggestions. Currently, yeah. no, uh, no plans, mm. but we know there are some significant changes yeah. to, uh, coming up, there's some significant changes yeah. in the pipeline. There's some, there's some physical barriers to get by, but again, never say never. Mm. So then on to a few more questions here. So we've got one from Tardimo. They say, can inox cutting wheels be used on ferrous metals? Yes, I have. Mm. Yep. Yeah, I've used inox um, blades. Um, they were originally designed, I think, for stainless steel, the one mil ones, um, which in actual fact, perfect for welding. So mm. if you put one panel over another, cut it with an inox blade, you've got one mil, perfect for welding you've got the perfect gap there. Um, I've used it for, obviously, when I've done welding on, on ferrous metals, it's never been a problem. Just drop, just goes through it straight away. Um, so yeah, although it was designed specifically for stainless to start off with, yeah, that will cut pretty much anything. Cool, let's go for a couple of uh, quick fire ones. Andy Fadian said, would love to see an automatic copper pipe cutter. Any news on that? Mm, not an automatic one. Obviously we've got a bandsaw. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's in the 18 volt range. True. Um, but not a specific pipe cutter. Um, would be nice to see one. Though. 
Yeah, we haven't got one in 18 no. now either. Um, there is, again, quite a few uh, products that will be uh, filling product segments yeah. and plumbers and pipe workers yes. uh, is going to be a segment that we're really, really interested in focusing on. Mm. Um, so possibly, yeah, in the future we'll have one for 18 and 12 perhaps, but again, um, not yet. Theoretically not too long a wait, mm. but watch this space. It's all, th it's all mm. theory here, mm. um, but I think that's a, that's a key product out there. Mm. Yes, the bandsaw is excellent, <laughs> really good at doing that, yes. but we mm. know that sometimes it is useful to have a bespoke pipe cutting tool. Yeah, it takes, a, it takes a lot of the work out of after cutting it with a bandsaw. So chamfering the edges and everything for you. That but, might be the longest format short fire question <laughs> I've ever received back. Um, let's try again. Was that one question? Was that we, is it? Yeah, that was one singular question <laughs> that I asked and okay. we went on for another 10 minutes. See, because no, I'm don't. constantly getting distracted because I keep looking for the GSS 18 V-40N or, or the 40. I'm nearly, I'll be looking at the screen, I'm nearly 100% confident that is just the 13. Nearly 100%. Nearly 100%. It looks exactly like it. So, uh, and that's, that's good that's enough for me. Matters. So long as it mm. looks the same, we're okay. That's the 18 volt one you're looking at there. I know, but... Right, <laughs> quick fire. I'm going for it. Neil says, add a base to the cutoff tool to make it like a small circular saw, similar to Milwaukee. Necessary? Mm. Worth it? Adding a base... You've got to listen to the quick fire. <laughs> it was too quick. <laughs> add a base to the cutoff tool yes. to make it like a small circular saw. Um, yeah. Um, it's all, I think it's all to do with the rotation speed for the grinder. So to cut metal, you have to have a, a faster rotation speed. Um, and I don't think the direct drive would, would, be, would work particularly well with a circular saw blade. So I think it's not the fact that you, we, we don't do a blade for it. I don't think the machine's built to specifically design for it. Just buy a GKS. Or buy a GKS. Cool. Buy a GKS. It's the people. It. It'll be too cheap. We've got, yeah. This product is awesome. They're both great. But they're geared differently for they, different they applications. Have a, they have a reduction gear on the motor, so which, which increases the torque for the blade, which you need for cutting through wood. It's completely different with the, uh, the grinder, because that's direct drive off the motor. Yeah. OK, I'm going to try for quick fire again. <laughs> Phoenix says, I would love to see something like a quick plate change for the orbital palm sander. Anything in the works? Uh, quick change, mm -hmm. but it's only four torques, yep. so it's... Quickish, quick enough, I think. It mm. won't take you very long, but if you're looking for something like X-Lock or Starlock, yeah, maybe in the future. Sounds like a good plan. Mm. Um, I don't know how quickly you need to change the plates. That's it. I mean, yeah. I've... I mean, maybe again, you'll just be looking at maybe what, what maybe I'd like to see is um, uh, more multi-tool plates, or base uh, uh, pads for it, maybe, because yes. obviously we've got the Starlock system already. I'm talking quick, so I'm trying to be quick fire, but the question and answer is really <laughs> long. Uh, You're trying, I'm but trying it's my best, but it's not is working, because I, I, be I can't be anything but Beaver Voice. Um, it's a good idea. Uh, currently, we've, it's the four talk system, which I think works really well. Maybe down the line, we might have a solution for that. Not currently. Mm. I haven't seen anything yet. Yeah. OK. You, you ready to try again? I'll try. We're, we're going to get it's it. It's going to be time. a one word yes or no on oh, this yeah, one. Oh, yeah, come on, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> OK, Grant asks, biggest reason people shy from the Bosch 12-volt system uh, when people see mine is that there is no ratchet. Why not a priority? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> why not the priority? Yeah. Uh, I don't know if it's no priority. I think it's... Oh, it's got priority. There is there's a lot a of pressure from there's a lot of pressure from him yeah. and me as well, yes. but mostly from this guy uh, yeah. that we obviously want that yes. in both 18 and 12. Yeah. Um, there are some rumours kicking about again. Always mm. rumours. Um, there mm. might be some solutions coming. Yeah, uh, can't give you too much more. No, no. Uh, be safe in the knowledge that there's going to be a lot of diversification away from the usual routine tools that we've been releasing over the past few years. Yeah, this is a right angle ratchet you asked for, yeah. right? Uh, just yes. as ratchet. Or just ratchet, yeah. yeah, just okay, yeah. Ratchet. Um, look, look, we manufacture a lot mm. of very expensive but extremely precise tools for production. Mm. So we know we can make these tools. Um, so the technology is there. It's not, not, nothing that we haven't done yeah. already, but in this field of yeah. power tools, we haven't yet. There's nothing really preventing us other than whether or not it's a market that's uh, good for us. Yeah, so, I think for the, when we're talking about production tools, the level, the level of quality there is mm. like top end money. I mean, just for the gearbox is a ridiculous amount of money for one of those particular machines. Yeah. So it's a matter of balancing the books a little bit, I think, and coming in for something that a professional uh, yeah. tradie could use. Yeah, what I'm saying there yeah. is we, we know how to do that. We know mm. how to make these tools already yeah. to an absolute top end. Mm. So we know, yeah, we, we know we can. So yeah. maybe we'll make something suitable. Yeah. 
Okay, I'm going to throw in one question, one extra wasn't question that? here. <laughs> Sorry, what was that? that I said that wasn't a quick answer either, no, no, was that it? That wasn't. I'm not even going to we... comment anymore. It's, I'm just, I'm embarrassed for you both. <laughs> uh, so, Radin0121 asked something regarding 36 volt. He says, or oh, sorry, they say, uh, Bosch Green has a 36 volt battery, which is obviously used for tools such as for lawnmower. Could we ever see, um, to my knowledge, uh, wait, uh, could we ever see, even though to my knowledge no one else is doing this, a 36 volt lineup of tools? Like the 18 volt hmm. lineup, but 36. Where have you been? <laughs> you, you can have this one. Okay, we, we used to do 36 yeah. volt power tools. If that's, if that's your question, we also yeah. do 36 volt lawn and garden tools in the professional range as well. So we have been here before. Mm. In a nutshell, because I've got to be quick, because this is obviously a 12 volt live stream. What we're doing with Bi Turbo Brushless, with our 18 volt pa mm. platform, with our Bi Turbo Brushless and our Procore 18 volt batteries, is we're getting the equivalent of these th of 36 volts. In many but at least, cases, actually exceeding yeah, it. The minimum yeah. is getting the old 36, but yes, yeah. exceeding that to get that truly corded performance out mm. of a single 18 volt battery. Yeah. Remember, it's cutting edge performance that we're talking here rather than the, the older. Ten, the way of doing mm. things when it was brushless motors and just large battery brute force. Um, they, yeah. We're a bit more finessed now with the 18 volt pro core system. Essentially, we're, we're moving, we, mm. we are definitely 100% moving away from 36 volt mm. and pushing really with our 18 volt platform and our bi turbo pro core 18 volt platform. Yeah. Moving away from 36, but in regards to 12 volt, not moving away yeah. from 12 volt. We used to have all three 12, mm. 18, and the 36 volt range. Yeah. That's, got, that, that's being sunsetted. But yeah. you'll see there's a number of machines that are essentially coming to replace the discontinuing 36 volt machines, such as the new GBH 18V-28C and the CF, and that is a direct replacement for the 36 volt equivalent, which again was well established. Uh, that's not a, mm. I just realized that's a very long answer again. We just don't do short answers, no. do we? No. Uh, Rob, we are moving on to the next section, aren't we? Which I believe is we're going to look at our miscellaneous tools. Is that right? Absolutely. Okay, let's go. So what we've got in front of us is four examples of some 12 volt multi-material or miscellaneous products. The first one I've got here is our GRO 12-35. Essentially what you're looking at here is a 12 volt rotary tool, very similar to a Dremel. How it works essentially is you've got your collet on the front here with a simple locking switch that allows you to add a wide number of different accessories. We're talking about things like cutting discs, wire brushes, small drill bits, and even some forms of sanding, uh, sanding accessories. It's got a simple on off switch on the front here, and it's got a variable speed wheel that gives you up to some from 5,000 to 35,000 RPM. So a very fast, rapid rotary tool. It's important to note on this machine, obviously don't run it at full speed all the time for all the accessories. You need to ma maintain the correct speed for the accessory you're using. Else you'll find a wire brush lose its bristles pretty quick. Yeah, on all the individual accessories, it gives you a recommended RPM speed. Yeah. So you can, don't have to worry about knowing them off by heart. The next machine we've got on the list here is going to be our multi-tool. So this is our GOP 12V-28. Mm -hmm. 28 means that it's got a 2.8 degrees oscillation in total. So mm -hmm. 1.4 degrees left and then right. This is a star lock machine, means that it's compatible with our star lock accessories. And it uses a small Allen key nut here to tighten on. It doesn't have the quick release system that the 18 volt system has, but yeah. the main point here of the 12 volt GOP mm. is to have a lightweight machine. Yeah, it's just to keep the weight down. They don't have that mechanism. Okay, the machine also has a, a, a speed wheel on the side here, simple activation, activation switch on the top, just a simple lock on switch. The speed wheel gives you between 5,000 to 20,000 oscillations per minute. Mm. So again, a nice lightweight rapid tool with a star lock fixture. Yeah, I mean, we all know from the previous live streams we've done regarding the Starlock that the, the wide range of blades that we have available. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, a really multi-purpose machine there. Right, next machine up here, we have the GUS 12V-300. Really interesting machine, this one. This one's designed for cutting carpet, carpet tiles, PVC flooring. Mm -hmm. um, cut it on a four amp hour battery charge, it'll cut 300 meters of PVC flooring. So very impressive little machine here. One of those kind of machines that you don't realize you need it until you get a chance to play around with it. So amazing little machine there. On the front here, we have a little shoe that sharpens the blade as you use it. So it's a self sharpening machine. And if you need to replace the blade, it's just a simple undo the screw, replace the blade pop and away you go. Right. It runs at about 700 RPM, so nice and mm. slow, nice and controllable, but still being progressive. Mm. And it allows you to cut up to a maximum of 11 millimeters of material. Yeah. We'll cut curves, but primarily it's just straight cutting. Mm -hmm. 
And then finally, right at the end there, we've got the 12 volt vac or dust extractor, the yeah. GAS-12V. This is a 0.35 litre dust extractor, which is suitable for just minor, small cleanup jobs on site. Yeah. However, there are two additional 12 volt products, mm. miscellaneous 12 volt products yes. that we haven't covered yet. The first one is going to be our GLI 12V-300. This is a 12 volt, 300 lumen LED light. It's very straightforward. It has a little hook here to hang things, hang the light off anything. And it has a simple but large activation button, which activates the six extremely bright mm. LEDs on the front here. Yeah, I think light for weight, that's a pretty good machine that. And the other item we have is the GAA 12V-21, 2.1 ampere power supply, primarily used for charging USB items and also mainly running our ja heated workwear, mm -hmm. uh, heated jackets, heated vests and heated hoodies. In fact, so much so that we're no longer selling this as an individual item, it only comes now with those kits. So now we've covered off some of these miscellaneous machines, why don't we head back to the studio for some questions? Welcome back. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we looked at some of our miscellaneous 12 volt tools. Mm. Um, a nice range, they're very random in some ways, yep. but we need to try and work out where to fit those. So um, in summary, excellent light, multi-tool, obviously the GOP uh, 12V-28 is a great tool. Yep. I know only Starlock, but there's a lot of blades mm. in just the Starlock range. Uh, GUS as well, fantastic. Sorry, the GRO, mm. that's a completely different machine. Uh, the, the, the GRO, so that's a rotary machine, very similar to a Dremel there. Yep. Um, takes the professional batteries, and most of the older Dremel range takes the equivalent of the DIY batteries, but this is the, yeah. this is a professional. If version, you so. are read up on Dremel and mm. Bosch, you may be aware that actually Bosch is part, sorry, Dremel is actually part of Bosch, mm. and that their, their newest range of Dremel machines are running on the professional 12 volt batteries. Yes. So essentially, it's, they've got a number of machines very similar to this, but Slightly more modern, actually. Mm. The newest brushless machine is excellent. Yes. And running on our 12 volt battery. Yeah, and again, you can use all of the accessories for Dremel on this particular machine as well. So, fantastic. Yeah. Um, the GUS, um, or the GUS, I'm not allowed to call it the GUS. Um, I love the name. I think it should stick. <laughs> Everyone should call it that from now on. It's decided. Um, the carpet cutter, yep. bit of a niche product, but as you, as you saw in the footage that we, that we took earlier, fantastic uh, cut and carpet as well you, you get used to using the the offset on it you'll be kind of long skirting boards perfect in no time yeah if anything we we get some criticism that mm. bosch generally just don't make enough specialist tools yes yeah. um but something like the gus 12 e 300 yeah at least you know that's probably where we need, we need to make more specialist tools yes exactly yeah. Yeah. and then lastly we've got our nice little gas 12v there uh mm. nice to have um not super powerful because it's running on the 12 volt but this is for your like little tidy up work yeah, yeah, just uh, yeah, cleaning up the, the uh, skirting boards after you've drilled something. Obviously, you should be using dust extraction, but had you not, you can clean up after you're there. Yeah, rounds off quite a lot of the range there, yeah. at least when it comes to the power tool. We're not finished yet, it's still going. Mm -hmm. We're going to be here quite late, so we have to thank the crew for staying so late. Yes. But uh, let's see, have we got any more questions about these or any other 12 volt power tools? Yeah, absolutely. So I've seen one that's come through maybe from slightly earlier on in the live stream, and it's from Alistair. And he, they say, sorry, I can't assume anything, the 12 volt router is not ambidextrous. It is a pain to use left handed. Right. Any chance you can prove otherwise? You're going to have to send us a video one day, because <laughs> in my opinion, I quite like using it left handed. Mm. Uh, you can obviously use it right handed. Activation here's on your thumb. Personally, I think that is much easier. Mm. So um, this is how, I mean, feel free to let us know if I'm doing it wrong, but... There's many different ways of holding this machine as well. Um, at least two that I can think of. So if you're holding it by the top section, mm. maybe it's a little bit tricky like that. But um, yeah, I mean, if you can send us a, a, a like, so like Chris says, a bit of footage showing us how you're using it and how you're finding it difficult, then we're certainly happy to help. Yeah, uh, we, I think we've, I think, did you just mention the fact that Genuinely speaking, I, I really think that most of our 12 volt tools are mm. pretty ambidextrous. We've had a few questions, a few comments saying they're not ambi enough. Uh, maybe it's because Danny and I are just pure Bosch and we don't know anything but Bosch, mm. maybe. Um, yeah. And we're so used to the tools. But as I look around, I think, mm. for the exception of maybe the circular saw, the GKS, and yeah. maybe the grinder, they're, they're maybe a bit more one or left, left or right dominant, but maybe they not. I, I, I quite I prefer using the um, left side bias circular saw blades, and I'm right-handed, so yeah, it's and there's a lot about how how you find comfortable, mm. how you find the machines comfortable. I think, but yeah, no, it's always good to hear from you. Yeah, there you go. I think 
I, I genuinely find it a little harder to activate it with my right hand on this. It's not a problem. It's not I just quite shift in my the hand. Right place, yeah, for your thumb. <laughs> but horses for courses. But I'm. Mm. I think I really like both the planer and the routers feel. They, but, yeah, they make a lovely pair together as well. Mm. As they, um, yeah, for, for basically covering all your your. Especially door furniture changing, perfect, or door changing, perfect. As I said, two little machines. We welcome your feedback. Mm. Let us know what you think of my answer. Uh, you can tell me to shut up, it's fine. But uh, let me know what you think. Let's move on to some other questions. Perfect. So, next up, we've got sort of a statement, sort of a question from Mountain Dweller. Uh, they say, Dremel has now released the first ever brushless rotary tool. Mm. Wonder if that will be implemented in a new version of the Bosch rotary tool. Probably the Bosch rotary tool was designed by Dremel. I think it's heavily inspired, we'll say yes, that. Yes, there's, there's, it's more than just a, a, a little bit similar. Um, even down to the, um, the threading on the outside of the machine here, which allows you to take mm. attachments. With this particular machine, there aren't actually any attachments, so it stands to reason it's probably they've yeah. taken an awful lot of design cues from Dremel here. Yeah. Um, again, the new Dremel, correct, is brushless. Um, lovely little motor, very smooth. Mm -hmm. um, would be nice to see one of these in, uh, in brushless motor form. Yeah. Can't give you any update or whether or not that's going to happen. It's still quite new to Dremel at the moment, that, that one. So, yeah, it's going to take a little bit of time to filter through. Mm. OK, so let's go through a, a couple of quick ones. Right, let's <laughs> um, try to quick. Let's regarding try to quick. Quick. potential yeah. updates to tools or, or new tools in general. So, Apefred asks, I would love to see uh, a USB-C, including power delivery, updated version of the GAA, both 12 volt and 18 volt. OK, mm. yes, probably. Well, not, not yes, probably. Yes, eventually. Uh, we'll let you know when it comes out. Yep. Nice. <clears throat> Good one. Done. <laughs> Do it again. PF Cutters asks about a 12 volt multi bay charger. I wish, mm. maybe. It's all definitely useful for the workshops here. Uh, we'll put pressure on that. We love the multi bay 18. Yes. We use it all the time in the workshops. Yeah. Uh, there's an interesting story about that. If you want to know about that, watch a previous live stream. Um, 12 volt, we'd love it. Mm. We'll, yep. we'll try our best. That was a slightly longer one, but I'll let you off. Uh, Grant then asks, the new oscillation tool with thinner handle plus bigger throw, the GOP185-LI, was only released in limited markets. Sucks when they do that. I get why we get it worse here and here in the US, but why your EU market? Actually, we've been waiting for it for quite some time. It's been available out there in the market for elsewhere. Um, for a bit longer. Is that the new, so. You said the new 18, yeah? yeah. Yes. Yeah, well, yeah. We're... Yeah. If, if the new 18 is the 185-LI. Yes, that's, that's the name yes, that's that's the given over there. Yes, the equivalent oh, okay, of that, yeah. yes. Yeah, trust me, we're waiting too. Uh, yeah. We are hoping it's going to be very soon next year. Yes. We are desperate for it too. Yeah. Uh, it's just going through the necessary safety checks, I'm sure, for that's the, it, yeah. the European different, different market. That's it, yeah. Different parts of the... It's because we're an international company. Different parts of the world need different red tape crossing off. Mm. Um, I'm assuming it's probably been tested and has, has obviously passed, um, passed testing in certain areas of the world, which of course it's gone on sale in, but for other parts where maybe they'd be a little bit tighter on health and safety. Rob's rolling his eyes for taking too long. Oh, sorry. Um, then I think, I'm sure that it's, it's, it's taken a little bit more time to get signed off. Yeah. We've got I've a, just done a very long-winded explanation yeah. of what you just yeah. said. So. We've got one, we felt it, it's lovely in the hand. Yes. It's a really great tool, we're looking forward to it. Perfect. Nice. Um, I'm really distracted now. <laughs> I was not rolling my eyes, and now you said other things. I'm really confused. What are we up to? Um, PF Cut is asking for a fast charger for the 12-volt tools like the GAL 18V-160C. Uh, mm. uh, probably overkill. The 40 yep. is pretty good, because remember, we don't do very high-capacity batteries within 12-volt. We only go up to 6 currently. Mm. Uh, Maybe an 8-amp charger, for because they're the similar cells to you find in a cool mm. pack. Um, that would make sense. Um, mm -hmm. But at the moment, we top out at 4 amp on the chargers. Yeah, pretty good. Uh, do remember the 12 volt battery platform doesn't, take, doesn't have the cool pack system advantages. No. Uh, no. So we are probably keeping it to a quite a low amp per hour charger for that reason. Yeah. We don't have any of the, basically any of, any of the cool pack yeah. stuff. No ability even to, to blow air through the charger, through the machine. So yeah. every, everything's kind of deliberate when it comes to Bosch, and that's probably a very important consideration. Mm. Um, but it would be nice to have a slightly faster charger. Four's OK. Mm. Maybe six would be nicer. There's going to have to be a safety element in there somewhere, so I'm sure someone um, more qualified than us has probably signed off. Mm. Yep. Not next one. It. Next one. Last one. In okay. fact, before the next section, let's go for PF cutters again. How about you make a 12-volt cordless version of your GSG300 
foam rubber cutters. I've not actually seen that particular tool. Yes, we've got one of them in the workshop. Um, fantastically uh, versatile machine. I've seen them on TV, all sorts of these um, renovation programs that you tend to see. Mm. Very well respected out there. Um, we do a mains one. Um, the only reason we do a mains one, I think, is because most furniture workshops are in one place and don't move around too much. Yes, maybe. Um, but having it, having it cordless would be a great idea. Um, just for ease of movement, you don't have a wire trailing behind you. Do you reckon that might mean that go, go 18 first? I would, I would imagine go 18 because you can you can extend the, the blade mm. by whichever blade length that you want. Two blades reciprocating in opposite directions. Exactly. Um, so I, if you're cutting a large or thick piece of foam um, or compressed foam, yeah. then you're going to need quite a bit of power to get through that. I think what, we'll, what we're seeing, again, we'll give mm. you a little bit of a, a glimpse at the roadmap in the future. Mm. What we're seeing is quite a few mains machine being converted to a cordless product, mm. and typically, as per our strategy, we want it to have the same, if not better, performance, mm. and that leads itself to either just 18 volt or by turbo 18 volt. Um, so we'll probably, that's how it will probably be, we'll change to an 18 volt platform, and if there's a market for it, we might bring out a 12 volt version as well. Yes, yeah. So to answer your question, 12 volt foam cutter? Probably not for a while. Mm. Okay, so uh, we don't want to spend all day. I really appreciate you all being here and mm. do actually put in the chat whether or not you like or prefer having a bit of a later start. Uh, normally we mm. start at 4 p.m. Obviously we're a little later because it's a special. We had a lot more yeah. preparation here and started a little bit later mm. and we are running a little bit later. So let us know whether or not the later start is better for you. Maybe mm. you're finishing work and it's better for you to catch the beginning of the live stream as opposed to having to jump in later. Right. So last section, Danny, we're going to be looking at our measuring tool range all running on our 12 volt battery. Yeah. As many of you may be aware, our 12 volt battery platform extends into our measuring tools range as well. Now we've got a couple of, well I say a couple, we've got a, quite a wide range of examples here. Let's start off with the thermal cameras. Okay, so we've got the GTC 400C and the GTC 600C. The 400 allows you to go from minus 10 to 400 degrees, and the 600C allows you to go from minus 20 all the way up to 600 degrees. Mm. The difference between these two machines essentially is going to be the resolution. The 600C has a higher resolution camera. It has uh, 49, over 49,000 measurement points. Mm. The 400 has 19,200 measuring points. So it's about whatever resolution you require for the application at hand. So each one of those pixels, in fact, records the data of both for the natural image, as you would see it, the thermal image, and the temperature reading for that individual pixel as well. That's right. Now we did, uh, Danny and I did a dedicated stream on thermal cameras. If you want more detail, mm. please feel free to check that out. When it comes to other machines, Danny, you've got the GIC 120C. Yeah, so an amazing piece of kit here. If you want to see places where you can't easily get to, then this is the machine for you. Behind bath panels, it's especially useful in the automotive industry, uh, when it comes to looking in for engine damage or anything like that, or just looking for a spanner that you might have dropped. Yeah, if you're trying to find, uh, want to look behind a wall, if you want to look up into a, a ventilation system, even if you are just looking in the loft as a pest controller perhaps, yeah. having a 12 volt inspection camera is really useful. You can't really narrow this down to any specific trade. Yeah. It's useful for, for anyone who's gonna come across that sort of situation. Now the 120C has the advantage that it's got the up is up function, which means mm -hmm. no matter how you orientate the camera, when you're going into a pipe or whatever, yeah. that the screen will automatic orientate. So whatever's mm -hmm. up is literally up so it's going to yeah. be as it should be as you view it yeah. with other machines it might be a bit more complicated because you have to turn the device or use your imagination to work mm. out which way is actually up the one we've got here is got the extended cable i believe this is the three meter cable yep. typically it will come with one meter and 20 one yeah. meter 20 8.5 millimeter camera on this as well so if you're trying to go through down even bolt holes mm -hmm. anything like that this will fit down there perfectly, and also it's got a built-in light on the tip as well. And so. in addition, as you're going to be put the, putting this into, well, unsavoury places, mm. uh, you've got the fact that the camera itself is fully dust and waterproof for yes. those kinds of applications. Yeah. So underwater, no problem at all. Now moving on to another product, we're looking at our detector range. We've got two here. We've got the DTEC 120 and we've got the DTEC 200. Again, these are both running on the 12 volt battery platform. Mm. These are wall scanners, which allow you to scan uh, through certain materials, say concrete, drywall, plasterboard, uh, bricks, uh, and allow you to detect what uh, is in there. Sometimes the DTEC, for example, the DTEC 120, that'll allow you to find certain material uh, find something in the wall, but it won't discriminate against it. The 200 will allow you to find exactly what you're looking for yeah. and also tell you how deep it is in the material. Mm. The, uh, the DTEC 120 will tell you where you're, if you're near or right mm. on top of something, 
the DTEK 200 just gives you extra features. The 120 goes up to a maximum detection depth of 120 millimeters in concrete looking for metal, whereas the 200 will give you 200 millimeters max detection depth. And again, we covered this in excruciating detail mm -hmm. on one of our live streams. So again, have a look back at our back catalog and check that out. Okay, now moving on to our lasers, we've got well, we have actually four machines in the range. We've got an example of three of them here. First off, we've got the GCL250C, and this one here, which is the 250CG, I believe the green beam one? Though? Yes, this yep. is the green beam one. Um, this is a combi line laser, so we, we have the, uh, if I take, pick that up there, pop that in front of the camera, you can see we have a vertical line and a horizontal line. So this will cast a, a laser, a, a, a beam, horizontal and vertical against a surface. It has a, a, an auto adjustment of four degrees plus and minus each direction. So it's self leveling. Uh, and it also has, because of the combination, it has a plumb line as well. Um, you'll see that as a red dot on a green line. So it's really easy to see. Uh, it goes up to a maximum of 50, mil 50 meters yes. uh, in that plane with a receiver. Uh, typically the working range will be about 20 meters in natural line. Yeah. Uh, because it's a green beam laser as well, that means that the, the green line laser is up to four times more visible compared to red, which is yeah. always a great advantage. We also have the, green, uh, the red laser beam one, but not here with us today. Yeah, I mean, it depends entirely what, you're, what sort of area you're working in. If maybe you're working in a smaller area where red beam will do, Maybe you want to save a little bit of money. That machine's there for you as well. Yeah. And finally, at the end there, we've got our GLL series. So these are our 360 degree line lasers. Mm -hmm. These are our 380 series, the 380C at the back, yep. and then the 380CG, both connected. And what, this one at the front being a green beam laser, yeah. both running on the 12 volt system. Yeah, so three separate laser apertures on this, um, 80 degrees, uh, sorry, 80 meters uh, overall diameter. This is going to be sitting in the center of that. So you've got 40 meters away from the machine at any one side. Yeah. With a receiver, a pretty impressive range of 120 meters range. Yes. So if you're needing a 360 cross line laser, then these two machines are ideal for you. Mm. Again, running on the 12 volt battery platform. So excellent power to weight ratio, mm. good and good efficiency, and obviously the flexibility to run these 12 volt batteries across all your power tools. Mm and your measuring tools. Uh, so we actually covered the entire range of 360 lasers in the previous live stream. So again, feel free to check out that live stream where we went through all four machines. Mm. Two of these were the machines you've got here running on the 12 volt battery platform. So I think it's around about time for us to check whether we've got any questions. So let's go back to the studio. Right, so then we had a, we had a good range of, uh, of tools there that we looked at. Um, yeah, a really great range mm. of measuring tool products. Yes. Um, again, all running on the 12 volt battery platform. Uh, some of them will also be dual power, so you can actually yes. run uh, AA batteries, but really 12 volt, much better platform, mm. much more convenient to charge and, and less wastage as mm. well. They have to throw out all those alkali batteries all the time. That's it, far, yeah. far more sustainable. Right, so um, we're aware that it's nearly been two hours. I'm mm. really happy that you guys have stayed here for two hours talking about 12 volt. So let's speed it along. Rob, what questions have you got for us? We've got a great few here talking about the measuring tools. One from Radine0121. They ask, regarding the thermal camera, could we ever see a thermal camera that plugs into the bottom of your device using its charging port and through the Bosch app being able to see the interface? I guess essentially having a larger screen for your device. Uh, an interesting idea. Mm. Um, nothing that I've seen. I mean, I think we wouldn't do it that way. We'd have a cable coming out the side maybe that you plug into yep. a, yeah, an additional screen. Mm. Um, personally, I think the screen's pretty good. Remember, it's only a screen that's allowing you to visualize what you're trying to take readings of, yep. and then you save that footage and then you export it to a larger screen, to a mm. PC or to your phone. Yeah, and you can, you can analyze it and then email it. Mm. So, yeah. um, so I would say that the demand for that isn't really, that we don't think it's really there. Again, more feedback, better. We think this is fine having it as a self-contained unit. Um, the more bits you have to add on, the more inconvenient mm. it is to use. We just want you to grab it, take your readings, because thermal cameras are much quicker, mm. and just get, get done. Next question then. Thank you. So the next question would be, oh no, in fact, it's a, it's a statement, a bit from uh, Radin again, um, saying, considering the EU passed the law where every device must use USB-C, there won't be any issues between the charging port of different devices as it will all be the same, etc. from uh, iPhone 15 onwards. I didn't actually realize it was every device. I thought it was just mobiles, but I could be wrong. That'd be interesting to see as we uh, develop new stuff in the future. Yes, it could be. 
Yeah. Um, I believe it's all low, low voltage device, so low voltage charging systems. But yeah, that's yeah. brilliant. Yeah. But, but important to note, currently uh, none of our uh, measuring tool 12 volt products they don't they, they don't have a charging power supply. Mm. No, it's it's uh, the the USBs on those are for transferring data currently. Yeah. Maybe in the future we might have the ability to do trickle charge, but I'm I'm not sure. No, I'm it's not sure. Consider, considering we go we'd be going from a um, eight to a twelve volt with the plug-in mm -hmm, battery, mm -hmm. or because this is a dual voltage with the AA batteries, it's running on six volts basically. Yeah. Um, a trickle charge of of what's two point four amps maximum, milliamps. Sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that's not going to be enough. You'll be there all day charging that. Yeah. Okay. No. So then, next up, uh, PF Cutters asks, how about a 12 volt drywall sander for small minor patch repair work applications of drywall when one has to cut the drywall to install a new wall electrical socket or install mm -hmm. HVAC thermostats, etc. Yeah, I get the idea. Mm. Just repair work. My opinion. GSS or the GEX 12 GEX, volt. I think will probably be better. Uh, obviously, that's a random orbit sander. We're going to give you a much nicer finish. Mm -hmm. um, so, Vine is talking about giraffe sanders. I mean, I think that's, we immediately went to that sort of area when we yeah. talk about uh, drywall sanders. But yeah, something like that would be preposterous for a 12 volt system. Yeah. But um, yeah, I'd use the GEX definitely for, for patchwork um, and replacing rubbing down filler. Or a multi tool. More multi tool, indeed. Just yeah. short, short periods of work. Okay, next question, next question please. Grant Walter asks, you have a metal shear, others have nibblers. When would you use one rather than the other? What is each more suited for? Yeah, we've got both in the 18-volt mm -hmm. range, but you are correct. In the 12-volt, we only have the shear. Uh, it's to do with how it cuts it. The yep. nibbler takes out small moons, uh, small, uh, like a it's hole a, punch, a essentially. Hole punch, yeah. um, for exactly. those who aren't familiar, and obviously the shears are like tin snips. Yep. Um, the shears can only really go in one direction easily, and they mm. have a minimum arc. Uh, you can't go too tight with the shears. Yeah. Uh, I think it's 15 millimeters is the ma the, the mm. minimum curve radius. Whereas the nibbler, yeah. correct, doesn't have any. Problem but you, you do have the issue of losing quite a bit of material in the process of cutting yes, it. Exactly. Um, yeah. But um, again, horses for courses, really. Uh, it depends what you're doing. If you're using a, sh uh, a shear, usually you're cutting a piece of metal off of something and then maybe welding it in place or riveting it in place. Mm -hmm. With the nibbler, you can, you've, providing you've got a hole where you can insert the machine and get, you can actually cut while something's fitted so you can remove a panel or something like that with the nibbler. So it's different applications for the different machines. Yeah, why, why I'm, it's beyond us, I'm mm. afraid. It's probably been decided, the machine's a little older mm. than our time here at Bosch. Well, not our time, but our time here as trainers. Uh, there's obviously been some decision that it's, there's not a big enough market for a nibbler but there is for the shear, I think, yeah. is the best way of looking at it. Yeah. I don't think there's a power issue. I think the 12 volt system is perfectly able to power either yeah. a nibbler or a shear. I think it's just demand. Yeah, okay. I think so. Next question, please. Next one we got from Grant. Bosch is the leader in laser distance measurement tools. Please ask them uh, to research and develop one with lasers out both ends so you don't have to measure from the corner. Um, we did one with a, the little point, so to stake into corners, to measure from a corner out. I think he wants to just stand in the middle of the room, maybe. Yeah, I mean, there are, there are um, yeah, there's, there's a good argument That's for that. something like that. Yeah, good. I, I haven't seen mm. anyone else do it, so maybe maybe it's a new thing. Mm. Maybe I've missed it. Mm. Um, yeah, fine. We'll, we'll it's pass a that question, It's a question that we can ask. There's no, absolutely no reason why we couldn't. Mm. So if there's a market, we'll try it. Then we've got a few quick fire PF gutters. How about a 12 volt heat gun like the 18 volt released last year? Uh, power problems? Not problems, um, but struggling a little bit, maybe? I think we, we managed to get. Um, really good performance out of the one we've got. So it's, it's what was it like seven seconds up to 300 degrees or something like that from room temperature. Um, but it does that by using the power it's got available to it really quickly. Mm -hmm. um, with the 12 volt, you're obviously limited with the power, so you wouldn't get I don't think anywhere near the performance. I mean you'll be going, you'll be changing batteries. Yeah, it'll take a lot. It'll take a long time to get up to the mm. minimum temperatures that you'd want, mm. uh, and it will probably drain the batteries quite quickly. So yeah. I think uh, it's a that's a Probably where 12 volts limited. Yeah. Mm. Next question. Tardimo says there's a Bosch Go screwdriver which is still micro USB. I presume they're asking about no. whether there's going to be a USB C one. That's the Go. Yeah. I'm sure it's talking about the Go. Yeah, Bosch Go. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Th that needs. Uh, uh, hold on. That is USB C. That is USB C. The, the, sorry, no, no, the, no, the, no, it's the, not. It's the not. push drive. The push drive was micro. Yes, I think so. I'm, I'm, I, I feel no. like I'm going to go check it, but the mm. current Bosch goes current? are not USB C. Yes, okay. they're not, not right. exactly. So maybe it's USB. That's what we're talking about. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Look, we conform to standards. The next version of the Go, which yeah. maybe we've seen, maybe we yeah. haven't seen. Maybe, maybe. Uh, I can put my money on that's going to be USB C. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Twelve volt glue gun. Yeah. 
Mm. Uh, DIY. Uh, do, do I do I DIY do a range of glue guns? We don't yes. do glue guns really. Mm. Uh, if we did, 12 volt would obviously be the platform. Yeah. Maybe even maybe 3.6 volt mm. glue guns perhaps. But for pro, yeah. I mean, if you can put an argument together as to why you would be using it. Um, maybe it's holding panels before you nail them, that sort of thing. It'd be great to hear. Mm. But I mean, um, that's something definitely we, we can ask and see if, if, uh, if there's something we could instigate. Yeah. Yeah. Currently only in DIY. Yeah. Maybe there's a market for it in pro, but mm. we're not sure. Let us know. 12 volt soldering iron. That would be useful. I'd quite like one of them myself, actually. Uh, but I haven't heard anything about that. Nothing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, good, mm. good product like that. Mm. Yeah. Okay. And then I think it's probably worth discussing this one just a little bit more because I know we are transferring everything in time. Uh, but PF Cutters asks, how about all the old 12 volt tools be upgraded to brushless for the ones that are not brushless and those that need some feature upgrades similar to their 18V Bigger Brothers? Uh, many, many, many are. Mm. Uh, the strategy for Bosch, generally speaking, is obviously to fill the gaps in both 18 and 12 uh, when it comes to range, mm. filling essential gaps. Uh, maybe then look at exotic products, but we're also replacing a lot of the existing products with brushless machines. Mm. Obviously, there's a lot in 18 volt, yeah. so you're seeing more 18 volt brushless tools come out over yeah. the last couple of years. Mm. Uh, 12 volt, again, again, we're not abandoning the 12 volt range, but they're not getting as much. Uh, product development is 18, just yeah. because that's what the market is very heavy in 18. Well, all, all of the new machines that we've had come out um, yes. have all been brushless, so yeah. um, we're not going to be going back to brush machines, I wouldn't imagine, I'm trying, for, 12, I, for the 12 volts. Yeah, I'm generally so. trying to think of the last non-brushed machine, because mm. like, you had the planer and the router, yep. um, and then we had the the, the GWG, yep. uh, the, the spot, spot grinder. We've got both um, of the sanders. Looking around, trying to think mm. what else we might have. Obviously, a lot of the impact drivers are all brushless now. Yep. The new combis and the drill drivers, they're all brushless. Yep. Uh, Flexi clicks, uh, the new one's brushless too. Uh, yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah fair, fair point. But I think actually you'll find that most of them are probably brushless. There's I very don't few. Think we're not going to take we're a step. We're not going backwards no. to brushless now. Okay. Brushed, sorry. Mm -hmm. Cool. So I think that's pretty much all the questions that have come through uh, so far. If anyone's got anything else, please put them in the comments below and we'll make sure to pass them on to the relevant <coughs> departments. That's right, yeah. We'll do a quick roundup in the next couple of minutes, see yeah. if any more questions come in. Um, but obviously, first off, I'd like to make sure I thank all of you guys for sitting and watching nearly two hours mm. actually talking about the 12 volt system. Um, we're always curious to know what kinds of uh, live streams you'd like to see more of. We're obviously doing things like the 18 volt platform. We've obviously wanted to look at new products that are coming out as of beginning of September. So yep. that's what our next live stream is going to be about. But if there are specific ones you'd like to see, like something similar to a special, like the 12 volt one and the yeah. 18 volt we've had, mm -hmm. longer format video. Uh, live streams, just let us know. We're more than happy to do the short ones. Oh, I say short, mm. an hour to an hour and a half yeah. isn't very short. But these longer special ones, maybe we could do these uh, less frequently, but mm. more of a benefit to you so we can really focus in and have a special That's day yeah. on certain things like maybe just just all of, M all of measuring tools, for example, yeah. as an example, because mm. there's a lot that isn't known about our very, very, very comprehensive measuring tool very range. Very broad range, yeah. yeah. Um, any other questions popped in? No? Great, I think we've, we've knackered everyone out. Yeah, We're knackered I too. Think, yeah, yeah. So, um, we should point out that this is Rob Harvey's last live stream. Is it, can you come back on camera, Rob? This is it. Well, come back on camera, I think. There we go. Yeah, so, back so, on camera. So, Rob, thank you very much for the... How long has it been? A couple of years you've been helping yes. us do the live streams? About two and a half years, yeah. Mm. yeah. You're off to bigger and better things, I believe? More live streams, yeah, with uh, YouTuber Matt Esley, if you want to check him out. I'll, I'll throw in the... Uh, Feel the, uh, free. What is the uh, advert, essentially? Yeah, of course. Um, thank you very much for being with us for so long. Yeah. We're gonna, we're, Danny and I are going to miss you, I'm afraid. Mm. We're desperately trying to make him cry, but I think he's got a bit no, resilient. I think he's all cried out. No, no see, yeah. the, the, I've, I've had to put up with both of you for far too long he's, today. It's so, the tears yeah. of it's joy that yeah. you're crying. <laughs> um, it's been good fun. I've enjoyed yeah. every moment. Thank you very much, Rob. So, uh, we'll be doing another live stream in the next couple of weeks, looking yep. at new products for September. So, stay tuned for that. And Danny? Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you very much. All right, take care.